All right, we back. My expert opinion, who knows, bro? Who knows? You know, ghost, you know ghost anybody knows. else? Nobody ghost knows. Ghost knows. Know. Ghost knows. That's it. That's it. Yo, if this is your first time watching, hit that subscribe button. Click all on the notifications. Hit that like, hit that share. Let everybody know you in here. It don't cost you no paper unless you's a mother hater. <laughs> a Brooklyn nigga like, who on my shoulder? <laughs> you got to keep your enemies close. <laughs> keep your enemies close. It's Queens in the building tonight, so he hype. He hype. All right, it's all good. That's all. Yo, he finally brought me my laces. Where they at? Yo, yo. He finally brought these fucking laces through, man. Yo, the clue lace. Fire. Fire. Can they see it? Can they see it? Can they see it? Yeah, you don't got to tie these up or nothing. You seen this before? <sighs> Clue like you got the bubble, you just yeah, I'm bugging. I'm like, nothing, what? yeah. I gave him a fire. Okay, all right. All right. Like, oh, you gave him a what color he gave you? I gave him a oh, just a regular, just so he can see plum. Do I have plum? No, you don't got that. Look at all the colors you got, bro. Yeah, you got a whole cinder block. I ain't got more than everybody in the room. He is the cosmic bro. Yo, I'm greedy. I'm saying. For no reason. Why ain't get the plum, though? All right, it's all good. It is what it is. Sean Bigger, man of God. You heard? Wait, no. Can we say something about Sean Bigger? Yesterday? Yeah, I was about to say it, too. I'm so mad that y'all cut him off when he said his wife is looking at him, he vibing and shit. No, crazy. no, first of all, we didn't cut him off. <laughs> <laughs> we cut him off. I did a whole example of what it was. That was that's my that. favorite part. I'm sorry to jump in. I know you did anything, but that was my favorite Somebody part. Somebody gonna be tight when they hear that. Yo, that, that, I ain't even gonna say that. That's crazy. That was crazy. Shout out to all the guys. Shout out to all the guys. Squad. Um, yo, you brought some bud with you, bro? My man. Oh, my, man. Yeah. Yeah. my man. My man. Yeah. Facts. I need to facts. see the facts. Yeah. Don't forget me, bro. Memphis Bleep. <laughs> <laughs> the Bleep guy. Let's see how often he gonna get bleeped tonight. <laughs> we got Queensbridge in the set, so I'll, I'll minimize it. Right, uh, I like I this. That you ever mean word? <laughs> I believe in you. I believe in you. I'm trying. I don't want to de get demonetized. Where we we're in a good space here. I don't want Math calling me like, yo, my nigga. I tr I believed in you. Fat, yo, bro. <laughs> Listen, bro, man. I don't want ghost calling. Me. Last episode, you was talking about. Chicks, man. Yeah, but they, uh, they, we can't uh, have this type of bleep Hoffa. Bleep, yeah, Hoffa. bleep that. Bleep that. No, that's a direct bleep Hoffa. Not Memphis, Matt Hoffa. Bleep. <laughs> Memphis bleep. Memphis bleep. Mecca, what's good? Salute, King. Respect. Um, yo, how, how many uh, hopes and dreams you crushed this week? Mm, week ain't over yet. Week ain't over you know, yet. Week ain't yeah. over yet. They say you hate the young generation, Mecca. Like when you they despise yeah, the young. Yeah, that, there's a lot that's of that the in the thing comments. Now. And, is that and, true? Wow, he's shaking his head. When they suck. Is that true? He said when they, when they suck. suck. When they suck, if you nigga, suck, show them suck. love, bro. Fuck that. No, nigga, if you terrible, you terrible. Come on, garbage this garbage nigga still stinks no matter how fresh you are. <laughs> open your this mind. You got too guy. much of your hair on your head to be this disgruntled. Young, this, the door, garbage <laughs> still stinks no matter how fresh it is. Whack ain't nothing new. You was whack yesterday, you whack today, you'll be whack tomorrow. Ah, uh, see. You get better. Some people get better. Some people get better. So pull up when you better. Right. You wasn't better today. You was whack today. No, in, in order to get better, you got to be in the fight. You can't I, be in no postseason or preseason. You got to be in the mix. Okay, you need to pay me to train you if that's what we're doing. Otherwise, no. when you show up, you're getting knocked out. Like, and if you're tough, you'll come back. But if you can't fight, you shouldn't be here. This he guy's a violent man. man. He's he's for for the the yeah, facts. I'm noticing because, that. Because he's telling me we're not going to fight. And I said people are emotional about their music. We need security. security for the Especially drop. for the drop. Facts. Yo, uh... If you if you fucking with the new show, the drop, um, leave it in the comments. You know, if you haven't haven't seen it yet, go check it out. Um, we we'll probably have like four episodes out by then. Right. By the time this one comes, right? Right? No, no, it's, no, 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 yeah, no, it's no, coming, it's coming. Oh, I already, I put the, the bad signal out. The oh, drop. My bad, my bad. I'm sorry. We in oh, the future. Oh, I was actually supposed to catch that, y'all. My bad. Ah, <sighs> well tonight. Mm -hmm. 
Ah, man. Queens get the money. <laughs> Regardless of rain or snow, sleet or hell, I kick street tails. Choking niggas like I'm Spreewell. Golden State holding your fate and in the palm, palm of my hand. hand. Blow you away like it's part of the plan. I got to talk it. Like see it. Like I'll be it. Most of my will be it. Oh, man. We got one of, one of the, I, I would say one of Arguably one of the best lyricists to come out of Queensbridge. Um, yo. We gonna get into it. I almost said something that's gonna give away my first question. But we gonna get into it. We got nature in the building. Yeah. 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 Get the money. Yeah. Yes, sir. Oh, man. Nature. One good. Good. One fourth the of the legendary firm group, which was like an all star group when it came out. Which leads me to my first question. You know, I like you okay. watch the show, you know, I'm gonna set it okay. over some okay. shit. Ah, let's, let's go. go. Why didn't you sign with Nas? Why didn't I sign with Nas? Why didn't you sign with Nas? Um, Nas never proposed a deal for me. You know, at the end of the day, you know, we were friends in the hood, you know right. what I'm saying? Uh, he had a situation going on. He had probably just maybe got that type of power, but at the end of the day, it was never a deal for me on the table at, at that time, uh, per se, for, for him, right. from him, you know what I'm saying? Mm. I wound up signing with the Trackmasters only because they put up the situation. Right. They put up the bread. They put up all that shit, you know what I'm saying? When I, when I signed, for the most part, my back is against the wall. I'm like in the hood. I'm, I'm in the hood getting in trouble. I'm, uh, you know what I'm saying? I'm, right. I'm back and forth in jail, shit like that. So, so to, so to say, yo, I got a situation for you. Here goes some bread. I would have pretty much jumped on it. I mean, because that was the team. Mm -hmm. You know right. what I'm saying? And for the most part, um, me and Nas' relationship was more friends than more so business. I didn't, right. I didn't meet you in the business. I knew right. from from the hood. From the you know hood, what I'm right. So it was just a little bit different. You know right. what I'm saying? Not like I, not like to say like I, I couldn't have or I shouldn't have, but it was really never offered to me. That was never offered to me. You right. know what I'm saying? Wow. Would you have? Would you have? At the time, if it was structured right, I mean. Uh, Doing business with friends can always be a little funky, like. I mean, because I'm signed to, uh, well, I'm used to coming to a major label. Like the guys that we were dealing with were were in charge of the a division in Columbia Records. Mm -hmm. So every time we would go to see them, we're in the big building. So I'm used to the big building, the offices, and all of these people that I don't know that's working on my project and shit like that. To have my man say that I know that he might have the money per se to sign me, but I don't see the structure. Yeah. Right. Like, right. Like like you would probably instantly have to hand me off to somebody else who I probably don't have a relationship with anyway. We might clash at the time because I'm like, who are you? You know, you're, you're, mm -hmm. you're forced to throw all these into you know extra parties into the picture. Mm -hmm. So right. You know. And you well, thought it out. That's 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 like the. The deep part of thinking, but at the end of the day, it was pretty much the money, and you know, you know what I mean. Just the trying to stay out of yeah. trouble. Yeah. Chance to just get to do what you want to do, and Trackmaster yeah. was still very, very yeah. valuable. Yeah. Right. You know what I'm saying? Well, they were those. That guys. was a good place to. That was a good place to be because they got relationships with everybody on down. So why would you know, because know, they, they were the prior to that, of that prior era. to uh, that situation probably being able to happen. Uh, the firm, which you probably would ask me about anyway, already happened. So I'm already, like I said, I'm in the mix of all of these meetings. You, you know, yeah, you it's, it's, it's happening. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? So it's a little bit different. All right. So at the time, Jungle was managing you, right? I guess you could say, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Kind of? Okay. Yeah. All right, cool. Let's go back. Queensbridge. I said this many times. Like, Queens, the borough of Queens, it's probably like the place where the most rappers have come out of. Like I don't think there's is a comparable comparable 
I'm yeah. Brooklyn. I thought Brooklyn had a lot of rappers. Mm. Brooklyn has a lot of rappers. We need to go down the list. Let me ask you this. Brooklyn got a lot of no. rappers. No. Yeah. Do a Brooklyn Mount Rushmore and a Queens Mount Rushmore. Think about it. Bro, the Queens Mount Rushmore. I'm going to keep it a buck, though. I'm going to keep it a buck, though. I'm keeping it a buck, though. My niggas from Queensbridge always felt we was Queensbridge. Like, there's Queens, and, and then, then there's Queens Queensbridge. Like, kind of like how far so Rockin' was. Like, like, no, 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 like, even though we still, we all rockin'. Yeah, we all rockin'. But I'm, you know, I'm from a, the, the projects, and not just I'm from the projects, I'm from the biggest, biggest projects. projects. Right. So, we have self-contained. So, you know, the only time, sometimes you only see certain niggas is like, when I go to the Ave to go see my PO, or you might be fucking with a chick, but at the end of the day, when you from certain places in, in NYC, once you say where you from, I kind of know who you know. I know what you. I kind of know what you about a little right, something. I'm, right. I'm expecting to know what you what you about. Right. Unless you show me otherwise. Right. But us in Queensbridge was like, yo, like whatever. You 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 know what? Yeah. You know what I mean? This was just. We didn't, niggas didn't give a fuck. Just like niggas from Brooklyn and anywhere else. You know what I'm saying? We meet right. up in the clubs. Yeah. And you see, Brooklyn's always over there, but niggas stuck together when it came down to the the hip hop scene and shit like that. But yeah. in real life, niggas ain't really fuck like, with each other. Yeah. In real life, yeah. they did <laughs> fucking <laughs> call. Okay, we gonna get into that. It's another thing we're gonna get into. Yeah. All right, let's 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 take it back. What up? You rapping in Queensbridge. Uh huh. All right. If you walk down the block, you got Havoc yeah. and Pete. Yeah. Come up the block, you got Nas. You go around the corner, you got... Uh, Tragedy. Tragedy. Everywhere. They're just everywhere. Omega. Different people all over How about the this? Ron Artest. No, we talking about rappers. No, but I'm just Shout talking about Artest. He do. He, he I'm talking fit. about the level of the hood itself, yeah, the yeah, quality it's, of humans. Well, it's just a rich environment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich, yeah. exactly. It's a rich Probably. environment. Yeah. yeah. If you're if you're a rapper, you growing up in Queensbridge, yeah. like, bro. I, mm -hmm. I think what it, I think what made it a little bit easier for us is the fact that, like you said, have it. Mm. Prior to that, like, you know, you could go down generations. Like, you know, you got Molly Mall. You got Roxanne. people that was doing shit like that. But when I say that, like, Molly Mall is the brain to so many shit. Like, Havoc. Like, when I talk about Queensbridge, it's real, it's real easy to say we created our own sound, so to speak. You know what I'm saying? When you talk about, like, Mob Deep, but you could, you know, I'm talking about the, the generation from Mob Deep. I don't even talk with respect to Molly Mall and all that. Right. But when you talk about Mob Deep, right, the difference between Mob Deep and some of those other groups is that Havoc in them was creating their sounds, where other people right now might be sampling and mimicking other shit. They had those dirty sounds that, you know what I'm saying, that maybe they're only like the rhythm might, you could be like, ooh, he has some dirty shit. They just made their yeah. own sound. When you yeah. hear it, you know that that is that. Right. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Other people had to go to producers to try to create shit. Like if you talk about a, a Nas and some of these other guys, they had to kind of create the sound. But Havoc and them always did their own shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's mm -hmm. different. And so yeah. Queensbridge guys kind of like made this kind of music that if you grew up around that time and you was really kind of into rap, you know what I mean? You might pick and choose who your favorite is out of the hood for different reasons. You might like whatever, you right. know what I mean? To each his own, like, you, like wherever, my, my honest opinion. Right. But the, everybody delivered in a way where it kind of like, it was like rap it back to back. Those early years, it was like, holy right. shit. And the only way that you even heard these guys was through New York City mixtapes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If you, had the, if you had the option of knowing somebody that lived in the hood, of course, you might know about it. But shout out to the mixtapes that kind of kept all of these niggas alive. And yeah, breath, shout out to like, Clue. The Clue. Shout and out to them. Clue. You know what I'm saying? Oh, my God. If I it mean... wasn't for those guys, because those songs and shit like that wasn't on the radio. You didn't have the yeah. option to yeah, turn the right. radio on and hearing that shit. But if you had the mixtapes, you might buy that shit just because only two names is on that most. If you a hip hop well, fan, like, you mm -hmm. might look at that shit and be like, 
I don't want this yeah, shit. Yeah, I don't, yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah, I, yeah. I, I'm, I don't buy the whole tape just, just to hear. Right. Just for them two joints. Just and for so I, I came up in That's it. a fact. Yeah, you, exactly. I came, you I came, came up in You it. spoiled. <laughs> you spoiled, son. Mm -hmm. You spoiled. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know Clue was becoming that hot. I just knew that when I got the call, he was uh, allowing me to get on his tape like early. It was a thing that, you know, you could get on the tapes, but after a certain number, number. they gonna, you know, people gonna start fading out. No, you start, yeah, facts. Yeah, you know. Right. So, but the first nine. Nine. See, I was supposed to say a number. Nine. Yeah, I, I, I forgot <laughs> to bring that up with yeah, Clue, man. Yeah, everybody wanted to be in the first nine records. Yeah. All the time. Because yeah. by number 10, like, yeah. how can I be number yeah. two? How can I be number yeah. three? Yeah. Like, yeah, Clue, Clue said he was feeling the pressure because everybody wanted the number one slot. And it wasn't until he got fabulous that he could, you know, argue like, this is my artist. Like, you yeah, can't argue that yeah, shit, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, but yeah. that shit used to be crazy for him. Now, what is it like? You come outside, everybody's around, you a, you a artist yourself. Like, why, why didn't I hear about nature before uh, the firm needed a replacement? Because nature never viewed itself as an artist like that. Nature just knew that he could rap just as good as anybody you, you put him next to. I've never been around anybody, but I know I can mimic shit. I know I love this shit, but I come up in the era where nobody's not really making no bread. So how hard am I really going to go? My guys, a couple guys I know in the hood is making bread, but... Right. I still don't really know. I'm still in love with the streets. I'm still, I don't know what I want to do. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm in the hood. I'm, I'm, I love it all. I love playing basketball. I love, I love bitches. I love it. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I just knew that I could do it. So it wasn't until, my story is kind of different from everybody else. Some, some guys actually like applied for the job. I didn't really apply for the job. I just knew the right people and I could do the right, you know what I mean? Right. When it was time to show up, I show up. I'm the guy that like never came to practice, but when it's time to come, I'm like, hey, I yeah, yeah, practice. What you talking about? Yeah, what the fuck you talking about? Let's right. go. When it's time to go, we go. You right. know what I'm saying? But, but what, I, it yeah, hurt me when it came down to business in the long run. But growing up, it made me love it because uh, other than the guys that you might be thinking about normally, like the like you just named all of the tragedies, it was the guys before that that made me actually love it because I didn't know across the street these guys was loving it just as much as me. You know what I'm saying? Right. These guys just put out records before me. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you really want to know, like dig into my history, the very first uh, people that got me to go into the studio to record a record was. Uh, Screwball. Have you ever heard of Screwball? Yeah. Yeah, you know what I'm Poet, and, uh, Rest in Peace, KL, you know what I'm saying? Hostile. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But they was like the first ones to kind of like invite me to the studio, and that's the first time I heard my voice on this shit like that. But other than that... What was that like? Incredible. <laughs> incredible. You know what I'm saying? Right. I'm like, holy shit, I could hear myself and fucking... You know what I'm saying? I always, I'm always, I still to this day, kind of like my worst critic when it comes down to shit. I'm sure you like, yeah, uh, don't like, like certain it. shit, and people be right. like, "What the fuck is wrong Yo, with you?" Good, you know? Leave it. Nah, nah. I'm, I always kind of been like that, but these guys gave me the opportunity to get in the studio. Oh, take my little fucking shit home and play it fucking five thousand times to everybody and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? But I never really had like a complete book of rhymes. Niggas might come to the studio and have fucking five books of rhymes. And I come to the studio with fucking... Who had five books? Just the various rap hood rappers. But it was you know nobody you remember specifically like, yo, he got the book. I'm asking niggas for a pen and paper. This thing got the book. It was always niggas on top of my game, on top of their game. The, 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 du the few dudes that I uh, came into the game early with and seen how they moved, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, shout out to my dude, Cormega. Cormega was a dude that was ahead of the, the game at the time, you know, when they was right. talking about, if you ever talk about hood notoriety and guys that was kind of like making a name for themselves, right. few names stick out, you know what I mean? Back then, back then, you right. know what I'm saying? Guys that had like cassette tapes. They would have cassette tapes and they would float around the hood and it would be like whole albums worth of dope shit. Like, you know what I'm saying? Tragedy, 
guys yeah. like that. Like, you know what I mean? Those were the guys that was ahead of me that made me want to do it more. You know what I'm saying? Because I had the option of coming outside and we had park jams and DJs and Molly Mall and Hot Day and these guys. You heard me talk about it in different interviews. Right. But they would come outside and people from so many different neighborhoods would come to the jams and some of these guys like Trash or some of these guys would rock the mic. Mm. So I would see these guys live and rocking the crowd and, and, and being just a little bit older than me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. There might be OGs in the club or in the park or whatever, but when you see guys close to your age rocking, you'd be like, holy shit, I need to do that. I love that I shit too. Work. You know what I'm saying? Right. Every once in a while, the, the, uh, the DJ might let the young local DJ come in and touch the tables for like a couple records. Like niggas would be like, holy shit, he's 15. And he would have a fucking... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Everybody's like, oh, Everybody you know, yeah, yeah. loving the little nigga. So I come from when niggas really loved it, and it wasn't really about the bread. And did all you, that did you ever rock the park? Hell no. Scared yep. to death. I was young, too young to do that. I didn't think I... I uh, these guys had, you know, stage presence in my eyes. Like they were stars. Right. Just, to, just to get on that stage, is, has you got to overcome a certain fucking... You know what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. People, some people might be the illest nigga in the world, then you go out here, rock the crowd, and they'll turn, they'll be like, oh shit, yeah, I can't do nothing. Freeze, freeze yeah. up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I don't know what to do. I can't do nothing. Yeah, read this you, book. You get that mic feedback, like, oh. and niggas is like, mm. yeah. <laughs> one, two, one, one, two. Yeah. Is this oh, thing man. on? Unfortunately. In battle rap, they throw up backstage. Really? Niggas, if it, come on, you know this. Oh, okay. You know, this is like a couple of them, bro. Yeah, they, yeah. they get Somebody stuck did up there, they go in the back. What's that name? Oh, 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 What's that name? DNA. DNA. Um, there's a couple of them. I don't know the other niggas' names, but them two niggas is notorious for that shit, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throwing up. Yeah. And then they come back, yeah, I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, whatever works. <laughs> With the throw up breath. With the throw up breath. That's why I couldn't battle neither one of them dudes, bro. Like you, you nah, you not just not. Yeah, that's crazy. Ain't that a Nas? Oh, that's, that's a Nas line. Yeah. <laughs> I was too scared to uh, niggas would throw the. Uh, I was too scared to kick my jams in the park, saying yeah. kick my little raps because I thought niggas wouldn't understand. Yeah, because that was like the fucking man. in the eyes of a youngster. Those park jams is like the equivalent of like a summer jam. It might not be. It's nowhere near that. He's like, holy yeah. shit. That was the garden. That was the garden. I saw a real man rock the first time when I was like nine or 10 years old about the middle park. He did hardcore with um, EPMD, yo. Wow. <laughs> Crazy. Nobody knew who he was, nothing. And Monty Miller Park, I won't ever forget that shit. And then to hear him. Spit that on the actual CD mm -hmm. after you heard it so in the, the park, park was something. Yeah, different. yeah. I, I'm getting chills yeah. on right now. And like, so, 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 that, so, and, and that, and that being said, right? When you talk about Queensbridge, <laughs> it's not Queensbridge. I was blessed to having uh, Molly Molly and MC Sham make a song called "The Bridge" early, so that gave our projects a sense of pride, like they gave us an anthem. Right. So mm -hmm. no matter what we are, no matter where you're in the world, when you hear this song, we hear the drums, and you hear the ladies yeah. and gentlemen, mm -hmm. we got MC Shannon. And yeah. Everybody from night. Queens Ridge becomes fucking <laughs> the Hulk. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. it gave us it gave us something. So it, you know, so from early on, we had a sense of pride about hip hop. So that's when that when that whole Queens Ridge uh, KRS One, you know, it, it, it was a big thing. You know what yeah. I'm saying for hip hop. You know yeah. what I'm saying for us for growing up. I didn't know no, but I just knew that. I never been over there where they was at in the Bronx. I just knew in Queensbridge we have we have hip hop going on over here on a regular. Right. So this is what I know. I'm gonna stick my chest out for this right here. You know what I'm saying? Just, Yo, just how did how did y'all view KRS One back then? I hated the bridges over. <laughs> <laughs> the fact that everybody I knew loved that record was like, ah, fuck out of here, you know. Nah, but because um, I mean. Just because I'm like the bridge ain't over, like you said, yeah, all, the, all this shit is going on right here. I'm like, the house, we can't shut us down. We got our own thing going on over here. Right. But, but what, what was that like? Like, okay, 
You when know, it's quiet because for every time you go yeah. somewhere, you might hear one record, you're going to hear the other the because other the DJ might just do that. Just like, oh, I got to play one versus the, the other. other. And yeah. I'm not neither, I'm not from neither one of those places. I don't realize the, uh, the, the problems, problems I'm starting. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but uh, for, you, for y'all, like, okay, MC Shan made the joint, everybody, then that dropped. Like, what was the vibe? Like, what was the... It was, it was like, like, wow. Who, who, who was this Who was this balloon? Did it pop the balloon? <laughs> no, no. I mean... Brooklyn, <laughs> who is this nigga? Find this nigga. <laughs> you got, exactly. Got, something got, fucking done, man. We had, we Somebody had, gotta do something. We had, we had MC Shan, man. MC Shan was the epitome, epitome of hip hop to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? The way he rocked his rock. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he rocked his rock. Yeah. So, go, not getting into him, you gotta remember. He still had other battles going on too. He got into it with like LL. It was a whole bunch of people that he was kind of like doing this thing with. So we kind of rooting that on. Like, yeah. I'm not stuck on KRS One. I, I respect KRS One. At first, I didn't like uh, this. I just didn't like the bridge is over. Yeah. But then when I started listening to those other records, yeah. like the My Philosophies and all that, I'm like, oh, whoa, like, holy yeah. shit. Right. This yeah. guy's, he, 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 yeah, he's, he's, you different. know, yeah. yeah. So I respected it like that. Cause I was one of those young guys that actually bought records. I come from the era of I was lucky enough to have. If you ever was in Queens, we had uh, a flea market called Queens uh, QPs. They used to be on Queens Plaza back yeah. in the days, uh-huh. and they used to have a little record music shit in there. Yeah, but we, I was on, we, we was in the, the South Coliseum. Side. I got my shit from the Coliseum or, or Hot Wax. So just the equivalent of the Coliseum and all that shit. The same way, mm-hmm. if you loved music, you would go in them spots and you fucking, they had some 12 inch singles or Crates. whatever the fuck you would buy, you know what I'm saying? I would buy them shits just uh, because I was in love with the music. Mm-hmm. And sometimes, you know, you buy shit before you even Knew what it was. Before you even heard it. Right. You didn't know what it was. The, the cover caught you a fucking. Remember you back know. in the day when the DJ was DJing in the In the spot, club? right. And we'll play the record. You'd be like, you'll play this. Spot. Just so he could see what it was. Rock. It's a rock, my bad. It's a rock and some juice. Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, all that <laughs> shit. Yeah. But but we loved it, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it was Street. a whole different shit. We used shit. to do that in B Street. B Street. Yeah, B Street. Right. Mm-hmm. He'd be the fucking. We had a fucking. Fan. Looking through records, all kind of shit, all kind of people being there fucking buying wow. records, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's so, you, you, so you was collecting? I would buy, I, yeah, I bought what I liked. Mm-hmm. I fucking destroyed some of the dope ass record covers just to cut them up and put them on the walls. So I always had like Molly Mall in control, you know, with the Juice Crew and. Different fucking shit that I guess I, I idolized at the time, you know what I'm saying? Right. I created my own little fucking sanctuary in the fucking crib and shit like that. But, um, yeah, I did it. I did it. You know what I'm saying? So and fucking... And this was before fucking CDs and fucking anything. Like, you actually played the fucking record. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the, fucking... Put the needle on yeah, it. Right. Yeah, I love that shit. So, so from there... When did you start writing? Shoes. Uh, my writing process has always been difficult, still to this day. Mm-hmm. Keep it a buck. Why is it difficult? Because sometimes it's hard for me to stay in a certain in a zone that I want to be in. You know what I'm saying? I always, I'm the type of guy that even if I wrote the rhyme somewhere else, by the time I got to the studio, I would want to change it anyway, certain parts of it. Mm. Some of the shit that I, you probably might hear me spit, and you probably would go, yo, I love that shit. I probably would hate. 80% of that shit. You know what I mean? Just wanted to be perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. You know, to a fault. That explains so much. To a fault. Explains yeah, so that, much. That, that, that happens. To a fault. Yeah, you get in your own way. Because, Facts. I mean, you don't notice it until you see so much garbage that other people put out. You be like, wait a minute, am I going too hard? Yeah, because <laughs> they don't give a shit. What the fuck? Yo. <laughs> <laughs> my nigga. You know how many times? Which one? Do I have to rock? Oh, my bad, brother. Uh-huh. And if, in a fucking battle event, a nigga say a line, and I'm like, Psh. and the crowd is like, yo, I'm crazy. <laughs> and I'm like, yo, I would have threw that in the trash. <laughs> like, Whoa. wow, I'm, Whoa. I'm doing too much thinking. Yeah. Then I come up with some shit that I think is next level. And 
nobody catch that shit. Right. It'd be like And that. I'm like, yo, once I if I explain it to you, you're gonna be like, you're a genius, but mm -hmm. yeah, so overthinking sometimes. Yeah. We, or right. just and just expecting you think everybody's gonna be on the same level when it comes down to that shit, and then when you hear people be like, "Yo, that dumbing down shit," and sometimes I, I I would do shit just for the sake of the song, not even really for my benefit, because a lot of people would say, "Yo, when you get on a song with Nature, he's gonna fucking." He's gonna try to take your head off, so you know. So then it turns into a different kind of a. The song changes because you worried about keeping up with me as opposed to just doing, doing you. you. Right. What's the record you dumbed down on? You you regret? I don't it? never. Uh, I don't regret oh, any record. We're we going too far. I don't regret any record. You know what I mean? I don't. I've never. I never. No. Nah. Any record that you've ever heard from me, it's gonna. You know. Gonna always gonna be like, oh, that's that's a Nate record. That's something in there that's gonna be of Nate, of of you know something that you expect from me. What? I can't just. I come from the camp and the cloth of. I can't just cheat my way through certain shit. They expect certain things from me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. On a, on an artist level. Right. If you know me already. If you don't know me, I'm. A, it's, it's whatever, whatever. You might just. You might think that I'm a. I don't know. Right. You know what I mean? I don't think I sound dated. I don't know how much music you've heard of me of late. Yeah. But I don't think I've oh, ever not, sounded. 98 Nate, I was listening to. Yeah. But, but 98 Nate is, is if you want to ask me about it, yeah. 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 No, 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 look, 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 right, okay. we're going too far. We're going too far. Let's we're go. Too That's far. how our conversations be. All right. You start rapping. Mm hmm Now you outside. Yeah. You in them ciphers. Yeah. Who's in the ciphers with you? Nas. Nas. Mm. This before the deal. Before the deal, well, of course. I know he could rap. We used to hang out. We was no, I mean before his deal. Before his deal. I'm talking about young. We talking about 14, 15 15. year old mm -hmm. kids in the right. projects. I knew he was one of the best dudes I ever heard. Right. Young. Nas. Nas. Who else? Uh, Mega. Mega. Mega for the simple fact that he could freestyle his ass off. I always appreciated somebody that could really like, and you know they freestyling because they might be talking about exactly what's happening Man, at the time, like on, you yeah. know the shirt you got on and it's right. You know he's yeah, he, yeah, yeah. He, and you be like, oh, oh, you know I didn't know no better, but he knew he had something about him that he was a, a notch above people. Right. Plus he had access to actually recording before everybody, so he had. You could actually hear him. You could play him and why, be like, why was yo. That? Because he was featured on a black poet song. You know, the poet and Hot Day had a group together called PhD back in the days. Mm -hmm. And one of those songs, it threw him on there. I don't know if he even like introduced him, like where his name was, but we knew who it was. You know what I'm saying? I knew yeah. his voice. And I'd be like, oh, that's dope. You got a record. What yeah. is it? You know, how did you do that? How did you get your voice on that? On that, you know, I was, yeah. I was that guy. Yeah, you know, right. fuck, I was stupid. I wanted to ask all the questions. Yeah. But he had a notch over people because somebody put him on a record. Right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Certain people you just knew. You know what I'm saying? The story, everybody knows Prodigy is not from the projects, right. but um, uh, Craig G. Craig Salute. G. Forgot about him. Craig he is G. from Queens. It's a zillion. It's a zillion. It's a, it's a, a bit, you know, you know, but these, yeah. but this is all part of that big picture. Craig G was on the front line. He was in the Juice Crew. And right. Craig G was one of those guys. He was in the ciphers, would you? I mean, it, it wasn't necessarily ciphers like that. Like they had the park jams. These guys were. Craig G was one of the guys that wasn't afraid to. He, would, I could see him. I heard his. I, yeah. He got a record. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't know if you knew it. It was it was like shout, like shout. Yeah. Molly Mall had the radio, so you were always if you listened to the radio back then, the uh, uh, fucking, oh, the oh, fucking, VLS or Kiss. Yeah, you know what I mean? Red I mean, Alert and seven, fucking. Seven, if you if you was into hip hop yeah. back then, one hundred and five. That's all we had. You know, yeah, we all we all OGs in here. You right. know what I'm saying? But if you was part of that, you knew that Molly Mall let in his guys. 
you play his guys' records. At Red Alert, you would hear the KRS's and the his guys, yeah. and the, you know what I'm saying? Right. So, and that's how hip hop was broken down like that. It was nobody else who, unless you stayed up late to listen to college radio and shit like that. You know what I mean? Which we did. Fucking, that was you know, Which junkies. We was music junkies. You just want to hear the newest shit and then right. the new shit. So, I was blessed to have all of the new shit around me. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't fucking cool. get to hear everything else. So yeah, Nas, Mega, who else was Craig in the cycle? Craig, Craig G, Craig G, Tragedy. Mar Tragedy. Yeah, Havoc. Have it. The prodigy was coming around still. The prodigy all the coming time. around, fucking. And through that whole click, through 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 Marv Deep, you got a whole sound of them got of that like rapper Noid. 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 Uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, uh, infamous Mob, uh, and you know, there's a whole sound of of that whole that shit. That's crazy. Half a mil's from Brooklyn. Imagine Bro being in a cipher with these guys like I can't I can't plus you plus you don't see it coming till you look back at it and realize who you were standing there with you, wow. you have at the at the time he's talking about there's no way you would know that this guy would become top 5 all time you see because what I'm you saying? got to remember we talk about hip hop because it's our lives right we might try to either we're fortunate enough to make money from it or if not, it's just our lives, right? It's not gonna change, no matter right. how old you get. It's just, these guys that were, are my peers, we looking at it as they looking at hip hop first. No, we're not, nobody's not making money from it. Hip hop is just, their, 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 it's not you know, the right. shit that they do on the side. These guys are selling crack and fucking, we're warring with each other and fucking, you know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter if you're, you know, the world might look at you as a, a rapper now because you tried it later on, but rap might not have never been your first love if it wasn't for something before you that inspired you like you know what i'm saying right and if because if the guys before us didn't choose to do hip-hop if they choose to say i mean we're gonna we were just gonna be lawyers and doctors how many people would just say hey i'm gonna be a lawyer and doctor too it was so glorifying to us to to, to, right. to all that shit, you right. know what i'm saying mm. yeah capone capone yeah, yeah, yeah. but I, it's, you know it's a different for me because we're not all the same age too Mm -hmm. mm. You know what I'm saying? So some of the guys like, you know, Capone and them, and I'm, o them. I'm older than them. Right. So you might not, it, you're not in the class, and you know, you're underneath me. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I, I might not know, I might not know you rap. How do I know you rap if you don't have music out in the street? And the only way you're going to get music out of the street is if you fuck with the certain DJs that's in the hood that you can go to their crib. Marley Mall, and but Marley Mall ain't fucking with, after a while, Marley Mall blow up to the point where he's not fucking with the local guys. He's fucking with LL Cool J and fucking, right. you know, the top notch guys. Right. So you got to fuck with guys like DJ LES. You know who right. DJ LES? So you got to fuck with like DJ LES or Pod Day. Guys that might be willing to let you come to their crib to rap over one of their beats or, or or them just taking some instrumentals, cutting it up, you know what right, I'm saying? Right. And so if you don't have one, the relationship with these guys, we would never know you rap. Mm. And I was that guy. They never knew I rap. Right. You know who knew I rap? The guys that I was in school with that was we were banging on the table, table and rap, right. fucking right. know I could rap my ass off because we doing it every day, nigga. I'm cutting class. We going lunch next period too. We in lunch again and yeah. again. We ain't <laughs> even going to class. class we just right. we, we just in here, you know. We hiding from the fucking security guards and doing dumb lunch shit. room and gym. It's, that's how it go, nigga. That's, that's how right. that's how it is. So and then I realized that the same shit was happening with it in everywhere I was going. So I'm no different from none of these guys. I just was plugged into this shit earlier than some of these guys. Right. Now, it's completely different because they could just turn the internet on and hip hop is as fast as you can fucking download it. But get Right. You know so, what I mean? So hold on. So from there, these ciphers, legendary. Legend. They artists, artists etched in history now. But you're still in the streets. Mm-hmm. You can't tell me that you was in some place 
perfecting that shit, bro. I would have a couple of rap books in my crib. Ah, uh, now, now you got the rap books. <laughs> no, just for the sake of it being a composition notebook. But it would never be a whole complete rap in there. Never. It was just what? thoughts. Thoughts. Was it poetry? It was rap without no beat because how do I don't have a fucking. I'm just writing it off my head because I don't have no access to fucking play beat and fucking. I'm not taking it that serious. So you didn't have yeah. complete yeah. songs. You just no. had the ideas. Ideas. Okay. ideas. A bunch of ideas, right? That you didn't finish. Mm. Some that might have went. Phew. But. It was fun to me to even get that far, to buy a book and say, hey, let me try to write some shit. Blah, 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 blah. Right. So when the opportunity actually came for me to make a move, it threw me off because other people that I went to the studio with, when I told you I went to the studio with Screwball, they were prepared. Guys were like, hey, I got the rhyme. I'm going to say this. Yeah. And I'd be like, oh, shit. shit. I know I can rhyme. So the, the pressure was always on me to, uh, you gotta go now. You might right. not be ready, but make yourself ready now. Right. So that was always. Did you? Yes. Right. Oh, every time. Every time. If you ask me to this day, I could go to the studio and I don't know what the fucking rap I'm going on. I might fucking start writing the rhyme in the fucking Uber on the way to the fucking shit. Shit that I should have been had. Right. That's mm. just how it goes. Do you work better when it's like right at the moment before you're going to go to the booth versus being prepared? Kind of like how when people don't study for the test, they yeah. wait. Some people are natural yeah. test takers. Yeah. 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 Or that last moment, they'll study one hour before the test. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, like I'm, I'm like that. Me too. I'm like that. Huh? I'm just like that. Me too. I'm the yeah. same way. I can't really worry about what you're going to do. Mm -hmm. I can't really. I just know that over the years, when it comes down to me delivering the music and rapping, I got into, I know where my comfort is. Got you. And I know when, I, when I've reached to the point where, where I'm hitting the rhymes and I'm hitting, I, I, know, I know that I'm connecting with, my, with whoever's really mm -hmm. with me. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? You right. know when you're in the pocket. I, I feel know, when you're, I know when you're when in the pocket. You know what I'm hey, saying? I, and, and it's not hard for me to get in the pocket. You know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Because for the most part, right, you know what people's, you can kind of like be an actor. It's like being, a, it's like knowing how I can, can shift where you are. I can, can, I can shift my, my audience. I can, I can gauge where my audience, where my, where my fans are, and I can kind of like move them with my words like in a way that you know, when you deliver words and you deliver rhymes with confidence, your rhymes don't have to be as... As complex. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. If, if you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I know. I definitely when, you, know. when you stomp that shit, nigga, and you <laughs> hit that shit, nigga. Right. And nothing nobody... I don't know how you get it, but this is how, how it is. Simplest rhymes that I ever wrote. Rock the building. Mm. People, are, people can't hear the complex rhyme. Complex rhyme, like, think about how we just did the drop. Mm -hmm. With Coast Contra. You, you deciphered Coast Contra's rap more than he deciphered his own rap himself. <laughs> nah. You know he knew what he was doing. You know what's crazy? But it's you like, know, you know what's it's crazy? like a thing where you don't, you don't explain it because you don't think people going to get it. Let me say this. But I can see his writing style, and I'm like, oh, you scheming. Okay, you're using connecting words. All right, so let me break it down. This is what you're doing. I ask you doing. a question real fast. Yeah. <laughs> When you write in rap, when you write in a song or write in writing, do you write with the intention on being on stage and saying it on camera every every shot? Depends on if it's a song. Yes, if it's a battle, I already know I'm gonna be on camera. I know I'm gonna be on stage. So battle, a battle in a song is different. In battle rap, the best way to write is with your body. I don't know if everybody know that. What you mean? Let me say, oh, body, body like, when, when you're writing movement, like 
you know how you're gonna move. Like, you yeah. might come up with a rhyme just off of how you know you wanna move. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Got you. Got you. Because so, it has to fit that movement yeah. or, or what you, you know what I mean? Then it ain't gonna land. Yeah, and it, it, with rap, it's different. It's a melody. You following the melody, and you know what I mean? The beat might tell you to go this way, but you might, you know what I mean? It's kinda like trying to synchronize with a beat. With battle rap, it's like free. Mm -hmm. It's but like how you do anything. But if you're known for battle rap and you're known for that kind of hip hop, is it harder to make a song that's personal to you? Because everything Hell that you no. make is going to be looked upon as... For me? No, I'm a personal guy. I'm the nigga that, that I'm going to do the best. Like, I'm going a, I'm to a murder you if I really know you yeah. and I know <laughs> shit about you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If I got to sit down there, like, I, I kind of like this guy. I don't want to, you know what I mean? You, you're probably going to beat me. Because I don't feel that same motivation. I'm not going to make got shit you. up about got you. Got you. Got I don't you. Like, got you. That's not my thing. But if I really don't like you and I know shit about, oh, nigga, I'm going, I'm, your soul is coming with me. I'm walking off stage with it. Because mm -hmm. I'm, I'm better with that. I've always been better with personal shit. So I hung around older niggas and they didn't tolerate made up shit. If you wasn't doing that shit, don't rap that shit. You know what I'm saying? They wanted to hear shit like, so for me, like, the older niggas was more impressed when I rapped about shit that actually happened. Yeah. And they was like, yo, yeah, yo, yeah. Son, yo, you yeah. talk about, ah, yo, that's crazy, yo, yeah, I was there that day. Yeah. When, yeah. So, right so that's, that. that's how my style developed. But there was niggas on the block that would say the craziest punchlines, but nobody gave a fuck because they wasn't living like that. You know what I'm saying? Guys that we never heard of? Yeah, no, guys, that, guys, guys that, yeah, I would say, yeah, you probably never heard of them. Yeah, they, they didn't, you know? So it doesn't really make a difference of where you get that inspiration from, because I, I'm quite sure you, you didn't have as many rappers around you, but you still got the same desire, the same, you fell in love with it the same way, maybe right. just not at the same time as me, you right. know what I'm saying? But. Uh, it's the same shit. Yeah, was that man. your desire to keep up with all these people who were around? Never. And it was never my desire to do that. It's different once you start getting money from rap. When you get okay. money from rap, your first thought is to probably repeat what it was that got you money got you again. Mm. Right. It might not necessarily be the smartest idea. But most people say, okay, this worked for me once. Let me try to keep squeezing the rag until fucking no waters in the shit. But uh, unfortunately, there was so much different creativity around me that, that if I ever got into a slump or I couldn't get into it, that I could get inspiration from so many different people, people around you. Right. So the inspiration wasn't necessarily to be the best. Never. For you. Mm. Never. Uh -uh. Do you? Wasn't. No, I just and then I didn't you, have like I, I was so much of a hip hop fan that I didn't have necessarily a best. I loved, like I said, I buy records. I loved, uh, fell in love with West Coast music with mm -hmm. N.W.A. The same time everybody else did. Mm -hmm. I fell in love with the infatuation that oh shit, these guys are doing the same shit as us way over here and way over here and way over here at the same time as everybody else did it. Mm -hmm. But it, but my peers probably didn't feel the need to want to mimic these shits. We right, probably stayed right. in our bag and said, fuck that, we, we, this over, is we over here. This so the drive wasn't competition. You were happy to be doing it for a living. You loved it. We loved I, it before loved you was it. even doing it. I loved it, and I'm just like a fan of hip hop. So I'm gonna keep it a buck. When the closest thing to me that actually turned into success with hip hop would probably be nice watching his success grow. Right. Because like I said, we did the firm early on. So I'm watching his transition go from, um, you know, his Home popularity going Street. up and yeah. you know what I'm saying? And people recognizing him everywhere we going because at the end of the day, I always felt that I could rap. But when you were in the presence of guys like Nas, you might automatically become entourage. You might automatically become security. Even though you might be an artist and I came to rock and I'm rock, I'm showing support, 
And when you see this becomes crazy and your man is in the middle of it, certain shit just goes out the window because you want, this is the guy, this is, this is the reason why you're here. Right. Mm. Why am I gonna rap? I'm gonna let him rap. So nah, not me. <laughs> so so <laughs> not me. Nah, so like, certain certain inters- it, certain it's inspiration. You know, you're gonna right. always music is gonna be music because when you in the studio, you're gonna vibe with your boys. But when you're moving right. around in real time, because you're not in the studio 24 hours of the day, right? Why you on the road or you you know the first the first taste of success and then moving around is with these guys. Of course, your loyalty is gonna be. You pulled me from the hood. You gave mm-hmm. me this this check, you put me in a situation. Of course I'm gonna I ride with you. Right. Whatever. Right. And so that's the way I was taught that it was supposed to be. So so because what the way you way you talking, it sound like it wasn't necessarily your dream. That's what I'm getting to. Nah, that's what I'm asking. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's where I'm at. I didn't it was necessarily that, I didn't necessarily know what it took to make it in the rap game and what it necessarily could do for me. Right. Because, mind you, this is at a time when there's no internet. So there's no way of gauging of how many people I'm actually reaching with these fucking rhymes. But you got Nas, Nas right there. Yeah, yeah. But, you're not, I, I, but he's saying he's they're the like, first to do it. They, there's no scale to gauge what now. it looks like to be that man. Now, but that's the look, scale. Look, 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 no. Look. We, do, we do the Firm album. Mm-hmm. Mm. After the Firm album was completed, uh, they, it's time to go on the road. But it's not really time to go on the road for me. It's time for me to go into the studio. So for the most part, after the album drops, there's really never no nature. It's no nothing. It's no not nature really. Side. It's a couple of shows and it fizzled out, right? right? Because it's a lot of discrepancies, a lot of inner wars that's going on. All at right, this all right. Well, let's take it back. Let's take it back. Let's take it back. Before we even go there, let's take it back. How did it happen? How did you become the fourth member? Shit, <laughs> don't make it sound like the fucking, the fucking group like that. Uh, <laughs> like I said, shout out to Clue and shout out to the mixtapes. Right. I'm kind of building up a rapport, a, a rapport with the streets, with, you know, people are asking, who is this guy? There's, there's no face, because there's no videos. There's you buzz mixtapes. You mix get the buzz. There's no, right. there's no, who is this guy? Nature. Mm. But you're taking your joints to Clue. Like your Clue. Nah, I'm getting a call. Yo, we gotta go in the studio. Jung, yo, Jung, we in the studio, we in the car. We fucking, Nas buys the car just so we can fucking ride around. Nas is getting bread. Right. We fucking buying multiple cars in one day. We fucking, niggas riding around with no license. So we go into the studio. Every time right. we know that this is a session, we go in the Clue. And once I get there, I have to write my rhyme. So I'm talking to Clue. So I'm usually writing my rhyme real fast and going to ha- bang my verse out and getting like into one of those early spots, one, two, or three. He, he, I just never, we don't go past three. Right. Mm. The only time somebody ever beat me really on a clue tape would be the locks. I'm about to say J. Locks. I'm about to say and you know what I'm saying? And my people's over here, you know what I'm saying? I'm in large amount. I'm in large amount, you know what I'm saying? He, he you know, he's, he used to be on the, uh, he was featured on the D-Block soundtrack, the No Security shit. He used to be, so. they, him and my man Nino, you know what I'm saying? So. They both from Yonkers, they both part of the, the clique, you know what I'm saying? Right. Rough play, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody in the man, you know what I'm saying? Man, right. the DCM, Trey, the family. But right. yeah, um, that's just how it was, you know what I'm saying? For me, it was, if you got a kind of idea of back then, uh, going to the studio 
and once you go into the studio and you hit these mixtapes a couple of times, because Clue's coming out like mixtapes is coming out fast right, now. Right, right, they like ha 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 ha. ha. Every you month. might go the, <laughs> twice the, a week. The DJ, you might go to the local music spot. They have a book, and you might could be like, Flip, which yeah, which oh, which DJ's nice. got yeah, some shit, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So when that's happening, I'm kind of like at arms bay. I'm not really. I was never really brought into what was uh, Nas, Nas, no, Nas plan. Mm. Nas plan was the firm. But who's giving your joints to Clue? Clue is a part. You know, I'm part of this family. Jungle, Nas, Jungle, Clue, Jungle. Steve Stout. Steve Stout. Right. It's, 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 it's things happening that right. I don't even, I don't really know what's happening. But you, know, you did, getting, you rapping. I'm, I'm rapping. They right. ask me to rap, come on, we rapping. Right. The clues putting them out, people's asking, because at, at this time, when this is happening, I'm still on paper. Like, I'm just coming from, you know, from, from locked up. You know, I'm on right. roll. I'm still, I'm still have to get permission to go to some of these places that I fucking, that I'm going to. Sometimes I'm going without fucking permission, you know what I'm saying? So right. I'm like, I'm still like Shaking. all over Shaking. the place. Right. But it was this opportunity that somebody put in front of me, like the, uh, to sign me, was Trackmasters. I don't know, it was, you know, it was anything going on between them and Nas on who would, or whatever, whatever. Right. Because whatever, whatever. But, That's but whole, a different but, day. But, but, you're, for but me, you're in a circle. I'm in a circle. So and I'm that being circle heard. is getting your joints hurt. Yes. And so when something happened within them, within Steve Stout and Nas and the powers that be, uh -huh. when their plan kind of wasn't realizing that it wasn't what it was supposed to be or what was happening, and right. they have to change in the, in the, in the knife in it, right. the closest guy in that circle that could probably some of it, you know what I mean, will probably be me. It won't be all of it because up until this point, they're making records collectively as the firm on the mixtapes without me. Right. So they're building their own fans and their own people that love them anyway. So at the last second when they realized that this wasn't what it was going to be and they throw somebody, somebody else in there. Well, what happened? How did Cole Mega uh, get out the situation? It was thinking with street shit. It was street shit. Yeah, I think it was street shit. I don't think it was intentional. I, I don't think at the end of the day he was probably, uh, probably glad that it all happened because it allowed him to do what he needed to do and become. Uh, right. But the story but the firm, there was a lot of haters. I hear. Uh -huh. You know, truth for the truth for the man, it was you know it'd be a lot of haters. You know what I'm saying? It's kind of hard when you have all of these people on the same team. Look at the NBA team that has all of these people. Everybody's a bunch not gonna of get. Stars you're gonna have this guy. We're gonna play together, but. I might be jealous that his contract is bigger than his or, or mine. You know, it, it's yeah, like that. It's all right. business. Right. It's just business. But, but that was, was that the situation or was it street shit? Uh, I don't know. It's like this shit is happening before me. I just know that I get the call. I get a 10-day contract to come sneak in here and fucking do my one-twos. Right. Because they got to fulfill. But, but, but tell me about those 10 days. Like... Because I remember the, hearing affirmative action. And I'm like, okay, just the firm, just the super group, just the all star joint. Mm -hmm. right. You gotta remember. Then the, the album drops. And I'm like, what happened? That ain't cool, Mega. Even on the, yeah. even on the yeah. cover. Yeah. Wait a minute. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. At, uh, Did you just come home from jail when y'all took that picture? Because, I, because we talked If you about look at, what are you talking about, the firm picture? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> If you look at that picture, you see that you don't really see me that much in there. It wasn't really too much to promote Nate. I'm not going to say it was a hate or a blatant thing, but if you look at everybody's picture and you see how my picture is, you can't really... You sideways. You wait, no, he way yeah, off in the back, in the really, corner. You can't really... I remember that cover. You know what I'm saying? Trying to figure out who Because, was. because, because, in all actuality, the plan was to have them function and, and I'm just, like, helping. I'm like... I'm like the, you know, in the of it yeah, I'm just like the little extra pieces, like, you know, I'm not part of the main course. I'm like, I'm like the, 
I'm the fries. I ain't the burger. You know what I'm saying? I'm the, right. I go. I go with but, them. But like they couldn't. They didn't sell you like that. Because at the end of the day, they didn't know how to market me. I was kind of resistant too. I'm from the hood. Yeah. They got. They got money. They doing Nas. They doing Will Smith. They doing Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace. Right. They doing fucking Trackmasters. Trackmasters. Is, they doing R. Kelly. Right. So these guys are kind of have a rapport with radio, and they got money that's kind of being dished out. You know, they charging fucking twenty five thousand a beat. You know, they charge. You know, charging big money back then. Right. So if you had a budget, you got to basically sign your budget over to them if you're trying to get some yeah. of that radio flavor. You know what I'm saying? Right. That was the thing back then. Right. So to have somebody from the hood that kind of like, I didn't have the same kind of flow and cadence that I have right now. I'm still kind of like getting my feet wet. I'm still kind of like a sidekick of, of Nas. Mm -hmm. So he's still kind of my co-sign to even get into some of these meetings because they know that. You know, he's bringing talent to the table. Right. right. You know what I'm saying? So you were in Nas's camp. Yes. Why didn't you sign with Nas? You said he's never getting paid No, because when I was introduced to this shit, I was always, you got to remember, Trackmasters are producers. Right. So it was, I had producers from Tone, beats from Polk, beats from all the miscellaneous track masters that you probably don't even know their names. So I was constantly getting music and they were supplying me with the studio time, the beats. So I couldn't really just fathom my man just saying, wait, no, stop all that. Come sign to me because every, I, I built a relationship. With, I thought I built a relationship with them. So that I was reaching out to them. They was we was you know we creating music. We doing shit. They constantly hit me up. Yo, Nate, here goes beats. Yo, we gotta be in the studio this day. Yo, yo. So it kind of seemed like you was already in. I was it already, was, already, it was already in. Already yeah. already. So to stop all of that already and just say, what different? I would still have to go to the same. And the only reason I met them is because through you, you getting beats from them too. You, right. you, you. You're, you got diamonds and Range Rovers and 600 Benzes and hanging out with these with the same guys that I'm going to the studio with. Right. Why would I consign to you? They're supplying me with the hip hop that I need. What could you supply me with? In all actuality, a check? And you said he wasn't ready yet. He didn't have. A he didn't have yet. a. He didn't have a staff to really pump his records. It was really him establishing his his because the more that he sells. How'd you get on the firm? Steve Stout, Joe Nas. That was a position, bro. That was a position. That was a you position. You want to Nas, AZ, Foxy, they all had solo albums out already, right? Yes. If I'm not mistaken. You, did, did AZ drop his? You were the... Yeah. Do or Die had been out? Yeah. All right. You were the guy that... You were the fresh... Yeah. Fresh side of yeah. it. Yeah. And people like... I know how AZ rap. Oh... Nas, Nas album might be better than how, what he spit on the firm. Uh, Foxy, you know, she, she's cool. I'm really, I'm not really into females. There's a, there's a lot because, because I, I yeah. know it's in there. Yeah, <laughs> I know it's in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you was, you was the guy. You was the, yo, bro. You got called up to the big. You, you got called up to the big leagues. Let me ask him a quick question, man. Okay. What was your business like? Have a manager. No, nah, nothing. Own lawyer, nothing. Yeah. You know, you we, got a, we got a. No, none of that. That's the. There, there you That's go. That's the answer. None okay. of that. There you go. None All of right. that. Because if he would have had his own manager, his own lawyer team, it wouldn't have mattered about track masters. Because the manager would say, "Yo, Nas give us one verse. We bigger than that." I mean, we just need Nas to be on your single. It don't matter. Who produced the no, that's what it was. We got that. We got. We got Nas to do. The single. Mm -hmm. Right. When it came down to do the video. No clearance. Oh, that was for the fall No show. This was My no whole, clearance. No, no, no show. Okay. No, no show is different than no, no show. Go ahead. Prior to it being a no show, we kind of figured that things was kind of like, might go this way. So it was, so. Why'd you figure I, that? So I would. I just just, just in-house, in in, in man, it was, it was. 
Because the same reason you asked me why I didn't sign the Nas, it might have been the same speculation across the whole board. The same reason that it might have caused a little tension, uh, tension, tension. between little us. Right. So there was some in-house turmoil. Because, maybe because that was supposed to have been what the plan is, but as we grown men, and I might be in situations that might be strictly driven by financial needs. Mm -hmm. There it is. And at the end of the day, who knows what this is going to be? Who knows what this could turn out to be? This is the first time that things go from zero to 100. Right mm -hmm. now, I'm able to take control of the way, of the wheel and do it the way I would need to do it. But how old were you? I'm still in my twenties. Twenty what? Twenty four, <laughs> twenty five. There we go. We about to say the, there the, we go. Yeah, 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 too low. Yeah, yeah. Not the low. <laughs> That's why I asked the James because this is all the same thing. And I don't mean to cut you off. We right. all had opportunities to do things. Right? When I was younger too, Puffy was like, I'm the OG, you the G, you gonna learn from me. I wanted to do my own thing for some strange reason. You wanted reason. to do it the hard way. I wanted to prove to him I can be my own Puff Dad. Bro, and he, my Bimmy, mental load was not developed. Bimmy wanted own. to sign me. I went in the office and I said, yo, let me do a track with LL. I ain't gonna kill him too crazy. I did one. Oh, God. <laughs> that, they, was they, that. They had, they had, that was that. That was that. You know what I'm saying? Artist, that was that. My frontal called, lobe was not, was not developed. He had you know what an artist called Tiki Diamonds. Around. Tiki Diamonds. I did, I, I did a joint with him. And this is how I met him. I was, I was at the video shoot. It was, it was a cypher. Me and Tiki was the only niggas... That, Eventually, it was just me and him. Okay. We okay. was killing everybody else. <laughs> All yeah. the other niggas yeah. just fell back and was like, just let these two niggas rap. Yeah. And I did a joint with him. Show, like, I, I did a joint with him. I did a joint with him. That's how he was. Like, yo. He was like, yo, that's just the head ain't on a Def Jam, nigga. Go talk to that nigga. I was like, all right, cool. I went, talked. He was like, yo, come to the office, played the demo, gave me one of the best compliments I ever heard. He was like, yo, this. This kid is like Biggie, but more lyrical. I was like, oh, oh shit. Nice. He's like, yo, wow. I'm trying to get you a deal. Nice. What does my big mouth ass do? Yo, yeah, put me on the track with L. I ain't going to smoke him too bad. I got, I, I got on with him. Real talk. They, we was in the studio. I'm downstairs working on a record, and they came and got me. It was like, yo, come upstairs. They want you. Bim want you. It was a fucking eight bars open on the LL joint, and I fucking yeah, jumped right on that shit. <laughs> and I got it. I had a cassette. I took it home, played it for niggas. Like, look, I got a song with LL. Oh, like, oh, you the man. So everything I was doing was like on fire at that time. Right. But because they didn't have a face to me, I was kind of like, I kind of like didn't unwillingly or unknowingly became like a Robin to uh, Nas's Batman for a second on, on a few of them tapes. I, I hear Be what you're in, saying. In my eyes because... In your eyes. Because I only seen the... I only seen the, the you know, what happens. I only see it, it landed in his lap. He got the money. He got the popularity. I would go places with him and, you know what I mean? People was just amazed to just see somebody of that MC caliber come out of the hood. He's right. repping the hood. He got a big QB chain. Everything right. about him is the hood. And we just kind of like, you know, I'm trying to find my way. I know I'm just right. as good as, 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 the, as, the, as the joints, but they know who he is, so I got to play my part. You know right. what I'm saying? But see, I guess for you, you, you felt that way. But for somebody who kept because playing... Because I'm still on parole. Mm. I'm still feeling like, shit, this guy might lock me up. I'm still getting in trouble. I'm still my dirty urine. So I'm still... Trying to make something bro, happen. no matter how much money you got, I still fuck... I'm in the fucking pharmacy buying fucking gold shit to try to clear my urine. Because I, I'm still got... I still got felonies. Right. That prison shit yeah. seemed to me like Definitely. it was holding them back. Going so back. The, so the only shit that kind of saved me is when I'm going to see my P.O., with check stubs of 50,000, big numbers and, and shit like that, where they going, oh shit, so he's you, serious. So you needed that. I you kind of show my album cover like, yo. Hell no, this wasn't, you know, this was, everybody you know, says Foxy this. They, my, my, my PO was saying, everybody tells me they rap. 
But everybody, Shit. Like, well, they, my whole caseload told me they rap. Him, do you know this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy? You know why I'm asking you? Because they all telling me they work for you. Because you brought in a contract and show, they say, oh, yo, we work for, we part of his game. We part of him. Leave us alone. Hey, I don't got a go. job. I got a, I work with him. Yeah. Because we at the label, we riding around doing dumb shit. We got the vans wrapped with our face on it. We just, we got the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. We, we spots. We riding around like it's our cars. We, we, we the guys. Right. So everybody that was on parole at that time is telling their PO, that have the same PO, because right. no matter no matter what hood you go to, it's a few f- people that share the same PO. Right. Because of the neighborhood and right. you know what I'm saying. So they were all telling them, yo, I work with him. I work with him. You know what I'm saying. Yeah. So it went from me catching cases and them being on my back to life changing and they seeing that yo, this is about money. I'm part of some real shit happening. So life is changing. And if you didn't offer me that. Maybe you didn't see my worth at the time. I don't mm-hmm. know what was your reason. Or maybe you were just trying to get your shit together. So mm-hmm. I don't I don't necessarily say that you was hating on me. I'm not that type where, of dude. Where was Nas when you signed? I don't know. Where was he? Out of the country. He was out of the country? Yeah. Out of the country. So you didn't even have a, an opportunity to go to him and be like... Because... Um, I don't know what he was really doing. No, he was... I mean, at the end of the day, I'm quite sure. I don't know how it goes because when you're doing deals... Lawyers talk to lawyers. Right. If you're not a lawyer, you know they don't deal. They don't deal with nobody else but another lawyer. Mm. So um, when you get a contract, major label, minor label, whatever, independent, whatever, mm-hmm. your best interest is to probably not sign a contract right away. You probably get a lawyer to interpret what the contract says to you because it's probably written in a language like the Bible that you probably don't even yeah, understand. Yeah. <laughs> Thus saith. Yes. We own yeah. your soul. Thus. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> <laughs> you probably were going to um, redline the contract and go back and forth to make the adjustments that you need to, to make you feel comfortable. You know right. what I'm saying? If you don't know what to ask for, you might be stuck in a situation, but you know what numbers are. You might not know what the Bible terms maybe but you know what commas and zeros yeah. appeal to you right so you might just be signing a deal going back and forth until you know the label feels right to give up what they want to give up and you ask them for the right is that amount. what happened yeah that's what happens you're never really going to sign a contract on the out. first thing yeah right. you redline it you make Walk adjustments out. send it out they change it. They don't like they that number. They make a counter offer. Send it back. Yeah, you yeah. go back and forth a few times until you. That's how it. That's how it. That's how it was with me. Yeah. Hopefully, most guys do it like that too. But guys from the coming from the hood, you don't know what situations are. You know, people got families. They see money. They might jump on situations and deals that's. Not, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm but that sounds like a lot of this situation. What I'm hearing is no, my shit was cool. No, no, not not even contractually. What I'm hearing is, I'm just coming home. I'm getting some shine. I'm in a spotlight. Yeah. I can't, I've never taken this as seriously as somebody else might have. But I'm here just the same. I can't afford to make a bunch of risky moves and fuck up the bag and fuck up my stability because I still have a parole officer to answer to. I still have shit that I need to do. I can't gamble on my man giving me a better situation than the one I'm already in. Because if it doesn't work, I'm assed out. Because um, mm-hmm. let me add into the fact that not only am I probably on paper, that I might be still catching a couple cases or some dumb shit. So, like shit getting, is, so you I'm really still, can't afford uh, to take hell chances. No. Right. I mean, so the only thing is, I'm not qualified to do none of this shit. I'm still fairly young, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Never once in any time has anybody offered me. A situation like this or an amount of money right now mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. to do what I've been doing right and if, if I could gain this type of response from not even really taking it as serious as I'm supposed to imagine, imagine, imagine if, if I did I'm going hard. Right. so take the situation now right. right not even realizing what the situation is how many albums I might be signing up for publishing how many contractually albums am I supposed to deliver to these people? I, don't, I might not be looking that they want, they might want 10 albums from me. Right. You know what I'm saying? At this point, I don't even really know 
what it takes to construct a real song because I've been doing mixtapes doing verses. I'm not even mm. really. I haven't really been doing songs. But you did an album. He had Tony. This is Tony, before. Is Tony and Poker this walking is before him that. Yeah. This is before that. They're yeah. helping me, but they are trying to give me the type of beats that they want me to rap on. But they're kind of custom too. They're not really have it. They're not. They're polished. Mm -hmm. hmm. I can't really rap in a way that I'm. It's I, selling those beats. Yeah. I don't live the way that I don't. I'm, I, I could go to the studio that is. Ice and it's crazy, and you want me to live, look like this, but when the night is over, I'm I'm going back, back to the fucking Queen Bridge. Right. You so, gotta remember track no, And on did. top of that, now you got notoriety, but you're still in the hood. Now what's happening in the hood is Nas already has probably built left the hood. He's already established. Right. A few people that might feel a certain way because of whatever relationship they have with him that probably can't get to him direct. It's different. Might now. deal with, may take their frustrations out on whoever else is a part of him. Like Loose who? Loose links that's in the hood. Like who? I don't know. Maybe Wiz, maybe uh, anybody. Just not to say that anything's gonna happen to anybody, right. but anytime you might see somebody, it might be like, yo, what's up with now? Where he's at? You know, be, and out of loyalty, I'm not gonna pass the phone and call my man because you gotta be for him. I'm not gonna give you his number and tell you where he lives. I'm, you know, right. whatever, whatever. Right. Because he's blowing to a level where he people wanna speak to him. Yeah. Especially if we from the hood. Right. And we, you know what I mean? Uh, but I don't get into metal or that. This is my guy. This is my dude. Right. So it creates different kind of shit. You understand what I'm saying? So at the end of the day, it's not about just packing your bags and leaving the hood and leaving your dudes. You know what I'm saying? You got to, you know, recognize what's real and what's going on. And sometimes certain moves that you make, might you might have to take a step back before you can fucking take two steps forward. You know, it's just how it goes. Right. So in the process of me dealing with Trackmasters and making these records, um, they pretty much trying to shape me for making an album, trying to help me make an album. Right. But what's happening is I'm not going to the studio fast enough to record an album, so some of these songs that I'm making with them is getting to the mixtape, getting to the mixtapes. Next thing you know, the whole album might be on the mixtape leaked without, a, without choruses, without Rough, so nothing. rough, yeah. straight from, you know, however got there. Right. So everything that you're working for is kind of like, all your secret weapons that you're trying to hit things with is kind of like, it winds up on mixtapes. So it's kind of like killing your drive. Right. So you got to go in the studio again and back, make more records. So these are some of the things that's happening in the process of me trying to make an album. Right. I'm learning like, yo, since I'm since I'm writing this since I'm writing this music on the spot, I'm trying to learn how to not make it sound dated, because mm -hmm. once you start yelling out years on records or you yelling out certain shit, because I was kind of like known for current events on these mixtapes, talking about uh, the video games and the shit that niggas is doing right now, niggas right. playing the you know the games and mm -hmm. the fucking all of that shit. Not but, live. No but if you don't drop these records fast as you write them, they don't have they the same own. punch to, you know what I'm saying? If something just happened in the news, right now I got, I'm got i capable of making the record and probably dropping the record the fucking same day. Right. But back then, if you don't drop the records as fast as you write them and you're trying to like get Hold a shock value it. of yeah. what's happening right now, right. it loses its, its punch. Shit. Lost yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. punch. It's punch. It's not... So I'm caught up in certain battles like that of trying to uh, cre recreate new records to try to keep this shit going because I'm going to do shows and whereas I'm going to do a show, somebody in the crowd might say, yo, Nature, yo, go perform. Can you perform this record? And I'll be like, that record's not even out yet. How the fuck you know that record? Because um, shit's is getting shit leaked all over the place, right. you know what I'm saying? I'm out of state somewhere, bitches. I'm going, yo. Come say that shit to my brother. Yo, say this shit what you just said to me. Yo, can you perform such and such? And I'm like, how did, I'm how did you know? Yeah. 
And this is at a time before, or like I said, internet ain't even out yet. So if you bootleg and shit and people's getting shit, you can Who's imagine. making your record? I don't know. Could be anybody know, in the I'm studio. I'm going to say it off camera. Oh. I know who was leaking well, the record. I'm going to say it off camera. So it hurt well, me. Yeah. I definitely That's crazy. Said. No. That's crazy. Right. Right. No. no. That's crazy. I know who was leaking the record. Thank Y'all you, said man. his name in this in this whole shit. Oh, shit. And I know who was leaking the record for a fact. After, after the show. Let me ask you this. You was breaking down all the stuff Trackmasters was doing for you. Did yeah. you ever speak to Nas and say, you my mans? This is what they offering me. Can you no. give me that same thing? No, I think at that point. Uh, or is your relationship different, or are you just a different type? of I think guy? at that point, I mean, the communication was starting to be different. It was kind so of. I, I could tell there was a lot of real shit going on. Because look, <laughs> you come from the hood, yeah. you don't know nothing about nothing, right? Mm-hmm. They tell you, we trying to sign you, we got some paperwork for you, but your first thing is you need to get a lawyer. Yep. So you might ask the same people that you deal in business with, well, how do I get a lawyer? They give you one of the so you might, lawyers. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's go Is first. that what you did, though? Hold on, I, let's, I, let's, I, let's. I had a conflict of interest of yeah, a lawyer. I first. The did. first one. The first, the first I lawyer did. I had. <coughs> then I had to switch and go get a different, you know what I'm saying? Right. You know what I'm saying? You don't know nothing about lawyers, entertainment lawyers. Other, you know, you're used to criminal lawyers and shit like that. So <laughs> <laughs> they hit you with the legal aid attorney. They give him the legal aid. Yo, here, yeah, figure out your contract. Yeah. It's the simple mathematics. You don't know. I got a lawyer living with me. You talking? You know what I'm saying? I can't have the same lawyer. Because once he got the same lawyer, they're in cahoots already. That's it. He's yeah, gonna yeah. serve you because you're Nas and you're the million dollar guy. Right. So once I bring him in, in, in to the mix, we don't know if he's a million dollar guy. They're not gonna go against you. Hell, so you proved say, you already. Know, yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so they're gonna say, yo, this is okay. I probably would want you to have seven albums instead of 39, but you're gonna be all right. Oh, you wanna get the real one? I get the real one. I get the real So this is what happens, is though. This is what happens. Mm-hmm. You take the deal, right? Fuck it. It is what it is. You take the deal, you fucking, you don't realize what kind of deal you in because like I said, you only focus on the beginning part. But now the stipulations of the deal is that you have to get a certain amount of beats from the people that you signed to. Yeah, so, so, they so, now, so, they so now I give you the money, but I got it on a, I got it on yeah, a reel. You got to come back. back hit, you got to come back in. Right. And you have to record only in a certain studio, studio to our approval. Because right. You button. can't just go anywhere because this is a time when people ain't in the house recording and doing it. It has to, it has to meet certain standards to them. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. So a lot of money is getting kicked back. This, the, but this is like the this. Uh, Regular business. A lot it's of like shit. The 90s. A lot of shit happens. Somebody pulling out guns. No nothing. <laughs> He's already you know on why? parole. Everybody, <laughs> and everybody's already together, because the the top, the knot to all of this is. No, it's not Nas. Steve Stout. Steve Stout. Trackmaster. Because Steve Stout, Steve Stout is Nas. capable of Steve creating this. Steve Stout is managing the Trackmasters. He had a position at Columbia. Mm-hmm. Situations happened. He left Columbia to go to Interscope. But meanwhile, the people that he managed left in his spot at Columbia. So now he had a position over here and, and a position over here. Right. But his focus was never me. His focus was always Nas. So it's like, hey, I'm going to send you with my peoples. I'm good. We're working over so here. So Steve Stout sent you to Tony Pope? Yeah, it's pretty much. It's like these are the guys that's going to shape your album. They're already award winning producers. Why wouldn't you go to them? Yeah, Who you going to, your man? You think you're going to. Tied you, up. You, yeah. Even if you went to your man, even if you went to your man, I still have to approve it. So right. there's a couple of people that's on there. If you listen to my album, like I got uh, Lord Jamal, I got a couple people on there that. I fought for and said, I want them. I want them. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to give them some money to do this. Right. And but we're going to do it fit, our way. Even that don't fit Trackmaster's production. It don't, but because what happened is a lot of these songs have been recorded in the ninth inning. When it's time to turn it's the too album late in, to, it's too late nah, for them. You so you can't, pull you can't, you can't reject it. Yeah, here it goes. Squeeze plug. See, but you learn some of it. You learn, because you learn your business on the creative side. Yeah. How to get your shit off, but... 
being that Steve Stout at that time, that's why he was the commissioner. Not only was he go, go on, go on. In the process of making this album, it doesn't flow smooth. We were recording at a pace that's I'm writing these records as I go. So it's not like I'm knocking records out, right? Mm -hmm. I'm getting records done, but it's a lot of money that's being spent because a lot of nights I got the yeah. niggas with me. We got budgets. You eating, budget. drinking. We, 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 we rented, service. We were rent we renting stuff from like Sam Ash. Mm. We leaving it in the She's studio. The Unfinished songs. Week. So I'm running out of money. So a couple of times, now I have to ask for more money. I got to get the budgets reapproved. Yeah. So the album was taking longer because. And the money keeps being spent. I didn't spent. realize how much money I was spending until they showed it to me on paper and be like, the dates and everything they that you write. They always show you too late. No. They By the time they, they show me, I'm, I'm, I'm dead. I'm dead. Whoa. I'm thinking <laughs> I'm dead. Yeah. I'm thinking I'm dead. It look like the, so I've I'm never owed anybody about this about amount of money. Right. Okay? But, um, you know, so it's taking a long time to kind of get it done. You know what I'm saying? And sometimes, fellas, fellas, fellas. Oh, and sometimes oh. you want to, people want to get it done before, uh, after a while, it starts dragging. You just want to get it done. The anticipation starts. Uh, it's like, yo, let's go. go. We, we gotta go. We gotta go. And so, we kind of like, you know, fixing records up. We thought our first record was going to be the record with. Nah. If you buy the record, it's like that. But if you see the video, it's not like the album. Right. It's different. It's only because whatever. Well, it was whatever. It, it was, things wasn't working in the way we, I, the communication was kind of like almost gone. Between you and us. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of when it was gone. It was kind of when it was gone. Gets I, I, but, all right, so this is what it sound like to me, right? It sound like firm album happened. Yeah. But you still in the hood dealing with hood shit. Uh huh. Um, whatever that situation was, it, it didn't hold you over, right? Uh huh. Nas is out of is out the country. Uh huh. So the only people you left to deal with is trying to get a dollar out of you. So you go to these people, they get the money out of you, they give you some bread so that you don't gotta be in the hood because you're famous now. You got an album out with fucking Nas, A Z, and Foxy Brown. So you gotta get out the hood. You get out the hood. But then you got people around you that's not helping you get your shit done. They're kind of like just hanging around. And in between that time, you know, you're trying to keep everybody happy, but keeping everybody happy, you're not focused on the music, and you took the deal for the money, not because it was something that you really wanted to do. No, I think I, right there, it's, it's something I really wanted to do. I've never been put in a position to do it at a pace that I was doing it, right? Before, it's a little bit different. You get the call, come to the studio. It's not an everyday thing. These guys are allowing me to record in a way that I've never recorded, where I can go pack a bag and go fucking be somewhere for a few weeks and record. So you was enjoying life. I'm enjoying life. I'm enjoying life. I'm not pressed like no, that. No, I'm, I'm not mad at you. Nah, you Zion like Williamson. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you Zion it, Williams. Oh my God. They, they, Zion Williams. They made right? it comfortable for me to do what I was, what I can do. To keep right. spending budget money. So, but if, uh, but but if I didn't, but if I wasn't in that position, I wouldn't say that I would necessarily go the route that other people would go as far as, uh, uh, you gotta remember once I start fucking with these guys of higher caliber, anybody else that was, anybody kind of like less than them mm -hmm. would be more than happy to record with me. Right. So now I'm not ever paying for studio time anywhere I go from A to B. Because you need to. Yeah, because, I'm, I'm, because this ride is, and this is budget, And you have budget, and they want to try to give them that budget. <laughs> even without the budget. budget. Even without the not budget. Not without the budget. Even like, just off the love, just off the. No, no, I'm not saying that you was paying them. Psychologically, the producers know he signed. He got a deal. He, he's with Trackmaster. This, this is how we do. Bring him into the studio. Give him whatever beat he wants. We're going to record it, and let's just hope it makes the album. Right. That's it. Let's hope if it makes the album, we know he has a budget, right? right. So if he likes the record good enough, like he's going to promote it, they're going to push enough, it. He's going to fight for me. Mm -hmm. 
Right. That's the so, so, so we what can go happens, anywhere in the world and, and, and we can go record. But it's so much going on that when that album comes out, that there's only one um, single. Only one. That was what, what was left in the only one. The budget. So. And Nas was a no show for the video. No, nah, he's not in the video. No, you said know. you said he was nah, a no show. No. Uh-uh. If you buy the album, you listen to the song. He's on the song, but he's not in the video. Yeah, he, right. He, he yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, he no show. Yeah, that's what I said. No uh, did he no show because of business? I think no. Nah, at that point, maybe I don't even know. Hey, I think that was a personal choice, but that's just me. I, that's I, just well, you, but you don't know. No. Have y'all because had the you conversation? Have, no, we never had that conversation. So what led up? What what led up to you me, eventually me, me, dissing me, him me, on a record? Let me let me um before you even get there before it becomes the Nas show because in no way that I, I want you to understand. No, Nate, this is your story. I'm just trying to figure it out. The communication has been like non-existent for a long time. Why? I can tell you why. Just from being outside, uh, I think Michael, Michael, I don't know. Hilton, if anybody is, is this like an industry thing? Like, hi, let's, let's destroy the friends. I'm going to tell you what happened. <laughs> They're friends? Lives. What? Let's destroy it. it. I think it's about it is it? When you went with track masters, right? Uh-huh. Right? And then, so this is the, the whole beginning of what messed the situation up was this. He didn't have his own team. If he would have had his own team, then they would have been able to talk and deal with Nas accordingly because this is Nas' man. No, right? No, no. So See, he can't deal with I, I hear what you're saying. Okay. I hear what you're saying, and and okay. that and and to that some point that might be real. But you gotta look at it from me. When you just ask me, is what caused me to make certain records? You gotta remember that you have to without it turning into him. You gotta look at what he was going through. He actually made records that kind of like made the people. He drew a picture of me that wasn't true to the people, and I kind of like. I couldn't kind of defend myself because of an artist of that stature, how can I, people automatically run to, you know, that side of the battle. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So he had a record that he kind of, when he was going through whatever he was going through that he made that he kind of talked about Prodigy, myself, and Cormega in the record. Yeah, that right? was um, Destroy and Rebuild. And the record was kind of like really disrespectful to some people because, and to some people find it funny, whatever. But to be on the other side of that, to have your name mentioned in the record to, uh, by somebody that kind of you kind of had this loyalty with would cause you to still be some, feel some kind of way. But, 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 I, but by that time, y'all wasn't even speaking, right? That, yeah, because it's, it's, it's this, this is like a jab. This come out of nowhere. Certain things come out of nowhere. You can't predict what, what certain people are going to say, but because we come from the same element, right? Mm-hmm. So you might have something against me that I might not ever know. You might not ever display it on no record. You might have a certain animosity towards me for some dumb shit that we probably, I might have fucking mm-hmm. dated your cousin fucking there 20 years ago. Some dumb shit. Like, like, no, no, it might be you something. dated my cousin, that's one thing. Uh-huh. But, but it might be the dumbest shit that- But did you date my cousin? after I put you on to mad other bitches, and then you kind of curved that set of, forgot about that, and then went straight to my cousin. I don't know. (laughs) It only only is until somebody tries to kind of degrade your character, where you might feel like, you might like, you might even allow some shit that an average person might be like, nah, if it's coming from somebody that you that you probably had love for or have love for, you might allow them to kind of push the line a little bit further than the average nigga. Like, like if you would if you would hold me somewhere and y'all right. drove and he just like out of love, man, he mush you somewhere. You know, you just say, yeah, you yeah, funny yeah, ass nigga. Friends, I right, can't right. do that. Right. But out of love, you know, it's the same type of shit. So if a certain nigga might throw a jab at you, you might be like taking a certain kind of way, like I'm not really sure. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I don't know what, what, what stemmed from it. Why did y'all stop speaking? I don't know. It could uh, just be, it could just be, I don't know. Na- nature. I could just be, I, I, I don't let's know. Let's go back. Yeah, let me tell you something, though. Something's not making sense let to me. Let me tell you because, something, though. Yeah. When, when I got aboard the train, it was all one big 
Understood. Circle, one big group, one big crew. Yeah. Shit start happening. Crew start dividing. I just start happening. Crew start dividing. Now, only when you are able to control your own shots is where you can able to change up the whole shit. My now, 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 when you change up the whole shit, people yeah. that's in the crew, certain people might feel the same, different way. We might have all been one, but I can't tell you how to feel. I can't tell you how to feel. I can't tell you how to feel. So as you progress in your career and you do mm -hmm. certain things, you may say, you know, I might have outgrown this set for a minute. It might yeah. not be nothing personal, but I might want to go here and go here and express That's my... That's fair. But... If it wasn't solid to begin with, I'm not the type of person to try to build a building if it's not no set foundation there. But, but my thing is, if it ain't solid and he's coming to you, that's like, all right, math is my man's. He's coming to me, but I'm like, biggest putting me on a deal. And I have to decide, I got to talk to both of them and say, this is what's going on. Math, this is what biggest offering me. You my mans. What you gonna do? That's a, that's that's coming out the mouth of a forty year old man, man. That's not coming out the mouth of a twenty something year old. Frontal lobe is not. I, I mean, develop. I, 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 I don't think so. I, it, it's not. It's not. No, it's right right. Did you even, expect even today? Even on. today, fast money wins. How about this? Fast money wins. The anticipation of getting fast money is gonna no, win. Did you no, fast, fast money fools. It doesn't win. Did you well, ever no, well, I mean, it, it fools. It fools. But, but I'm saying, I'm just as far as the majority, half the people is going to reach for it. He's right. They're going to yeah, reach, reach, reach for it. Yeah, 90% of the time, people reach for it. People are not thinking it's about the longevity uh, of this. Ain't, ain't nobody worried about, only in rap are we thinking about an artist's whole career as a collective to right. determine mm. if he's worth something. Right. In other genres of music, you could have one song and be the man forever. Yeah and just ride that fucking one song out until you fucking can't even sing that shit no more. But only in rap did I have to judge your whole body of work to determine on whether if you shit to me. Nah, that's not how it's supposed to go. That's not how it's supposed to go, mm -hmm. right? So if my man is making music and he's blowing up, I might unintentionally think that that's the type of music that I need to make too to follow suit, to try to, mm. to, to, to do, you know, to gain, to gain fame like that too. Mm. I never was like that. Because these guys reached fame and got money faster than I can obtain it, so I can't really, I can't rhyme about, you, you can rap about the names of things. I can rap about things as a whole. You might be talking about the Maserati 6004 X Coupe, and I'm just saying, me and my whip. You understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? I learned how to break the whole shit down and still get the same reaction out of you. Right. I just can't talk about the same things as these guys. Mm -hmm. So from the firm on, I always felt a little bit different because they had a little bit more than me. But I realized that I could get the same respect from the hood going my direction. The mm -hmm. same way, like, you know what I'm saying? Did you, did if you, you, if you? If you had the firm album, right? Yeah. So. On a firm album, when you're talking about Dr. Dre and Nas Track and all these guys, I, I played. Got a, I'm leaving more I than everything a, else. I got a song called Five Minutes to Flush," talking about flushing crack down the fucking toilet. Yeah, and the police yeah. coming in the crib. None of these guys ain't living that. I'm talking about that because that's happening to my fucking right hand man right, right before I wrote this shit. Right, you know what I'm saying? So I was just trying to bring reality into it from my perspective. Y'all bring reality to y'all way. I bring it my way. And we would fucking meet at the top. That's how my, my shit was. It's all about how you look, how you looking at it. You know what I'm saying? Because I looked at it like, I, I, feel like huh? I feel like in this situation. He called him for seven months. What? So he called him for seven months and he called back to ask him what he should do with the track message deal. And Nas didn't hit him. See, there we, there go. we go. How about the fact that he took 50 on tour with him and not me? So, well, that's more of, so because. What type of tone does that set? But I'm gonna ask this. That's same more, maybe. I, I'm gonna be under the assumption of because <coughs> anticipation was up. They kind of people was talking. They ready for a nature album. You gotta remember, we went from Firm to Nori, being from TV. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. Those things happen kind of like behind each other. So when Nori, being from TV, come out, 
my name is probably the hottest it's ever been. So they try to rush to get an album out of me. Right. I'm still moving slow, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah, Nori's no, going platinum at this time. A solo albums going platinum. You're on a platinum album after following up a gold album, yeah. right? That's the natural order of things. So you go on tour, you're not recording. I'm going on tour. You didn't go on tour. Yeah, right. Going on tour. But this is what I'm saying. If they was trying to get him a situation. So, so, not so what, the, what message does that send to somebody that's being offered a million dollars? Because now. And then six months later, now it's only 750 because he's waiting too long. You got to remember, like I just said, you got to get more money. You got to build this whole shit back up. You got to go. You really got to be in the studio. This right. is what they like. You got to be in the studio. We got to get this. We got to try to get it done. So you got to sacrifice not going on the road to going in the studio and focus on what you did, what you do. Right. So here's the question. If you could, if you, if they invented a time machine and somehow uh -huh. your man got a hold on him and was like, yo, they, I got this time machine, my nigga, yo, come fuck with this shit. What would you go back and do differently? What would I do to go back and do, do different? What would, yeah, what would you do I would do go different? back probably to, um, before I did the first album, like I said, because I'm always critique about shit, right? I would go over it from a musical standpoint, but like you said, I probably would make sure that I had the team to kind of push it because I didn't know the boundaries of how far the music was going because uh, it was a thing called uh, sound scan. Mm -hmm. And probably every week we would be up at the labels and we would track all these other artists' sales, and that's how we would know how good they was doing. I didn't know nothing about regions and you could be hot over here yeah, and cold and mean. shit over here. Nori said shit. the same thing. I ain't know nothing about it. Nori him. said he was still in the hood and then he was like, yo, who was it? Somebody took him on the road. And when he got out there and performed on his records, he saw the response. Shoot. He was like, oh shit, mm -hmm. I'm hot out here. He didn't know. Yeah, but, but, so. But that was, but that was big. They wasn't giving rappers information. One, if they were scared to give it to them because they didn't know where they would take it, you know what I'm saying? Mm. If they would get offended by it. Oh, this is why this is happening. Mm -hmm. It's not because I'm just hot. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing is like, I would be scared to deal with nature. Why? He didn't have anybody else around him. He had potential to go rogue at any time. There's nobody advising him. Y'all not talking to me. If I was... Nas in that situation, to me, and I, and I hope that nobody gets upset with me, it seemed like a little setup to see about loyalty to me. Because Steve Stout was there, right? Mm -hmm. Chat Masters is a part of the gang. Mm -hmm. Nas is a part of the gang. Right. Why would this part of the gang Come at sign him? Mm -hmm. right. And this is the leader of the gang. Right. Let's see if nature's going to go take the money. Mm -hmm. And if he takes the money... I know what's up. Because why? We're going to come back to math and say, I put him on a record with three niggas that's out already. He set up to be the next nigga. Does well, anybody see that? You know big, what I'm saying? Big. That's why I kept asking. So, yeah, why, so, did yeah, they yeah, speak? yeah, but still, no. You gotta and remember, when he said still, that he been calling in for seven months, but you gotta and he remember, pick up. But you got to remember. See, the seven, artists, seven, that's what he said. That's what he just said. There's other, other, other artists around me. He said that's his man. Seven 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 there's, I don't know. I don't know how. I don't, I don't know about the numbers. Listen, there's other artists around me that's established, though. You got to remember. Like, yeah. There's still A Z is right here. Okay. A Z delivered a, a single. He had, you know what I'm saying? Sugar yeah. Hill. He yeah. had an album. You know what I'm saying? They still. He's not signed to them. They they infatuated with him, but they can't do nothing with him because he's signing somewhere else. Fox is Fox is Fox is signing somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody's somewhere else. But they all had a team, no mates. Foxy had. And, 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 you don't and see the, the you don't move. they don't see the star they don't see the star quality. You got Fifty Cent is with me too. What are you yeah, talking you about? Fifty is right here too. We none, none of us is directly signed to them. You? They don't. They, start, they you don't know. know. They don't but know. You want the record? No. But, they don't Bro. know. They just, they don't know what they have. You could have, you could, they don't know what they, they have. They don't know they, what they have. They caught the alley. Bro. They, they know what they, they have. Especially in the 90s, that's an ill alley. They, they know what they have. What you think of this? making them the money already if Nas co-signed it, if Nas brought fucking anybody in there. You got to remember, I 
now everybody was blowing up. He didn't have the the, the, the time to, to handpick niggas in the hood. You know who's going to know who's hot? The niggas that's actually in the hood. Your brother, all these other niggas. And mm. I'm the first nigga on the front line. So it's only right that I'm going to fall in line right there. I'm not here to take nobody's spot. I'm not here to do none of that shit. I'm here to rap because I love like everybody else is rapping. So Steve Stout is already in the position of making money. I don't know how to the magnitude of Yeah, I don't know yeah. how to the magnitude of how they was how they was doing it. You get the call, this is what's happening. Let's let's go. You don't know what's going on on the other side. You ain't thinking that far. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Until these checks start rolling. Oh shit, now the checks laying on your lap. Whoever sent you that check, I'm fucking with you. Let's go. <laughs> What are you talking about? What are you talking about? You mad at me for what? You said, well, let's go. What? It sounds like a but terrible... I know Matt, but... but you I'm said what? Matt so, there, but... Matt would be mad at us. Yeah. No, I, like, I'll if, be pissed. If, if it was me and Heineken... I'll be pissed. Yo, if it was me and Heineken... I'll shoot your block somebody up. else came with it. No, deal, but people will shoot your block up. Why you look at Let me you know. when you say shoot the block? Because I know where you live. I'm, I'm not so sure about that. I'm <laughs> not where you live. Like, what the fuck? Shoot the block up. <laughs> they talking about making a move. Right? Hit the block. Shut <laughs> up. We're talking about hypothetically, no, though, of course. No, but position. at the same time, I know he would be tired. being being at the top uh, in the top position, you're supposed to know w the position of your of the people that that that's working with you. Mm -hmm. And if you don't know that, then you. There are, there will be occasions where they're susceptible to something else, because, you know, they, you, you're in a position. You I think like, when you look at the whole scheme of uh, New York City hip hop at that time, it was kind of like uh, chess moves for everybody, right? right. You think about the people that was on top, the people that was making those moves. And you think about the Jays, and you think about the Nazis, and you think about the Bigs, and you think about their managers and how they all try to position themselves to be like Russell and shit like that. When mm -hmm. niggas start making crews up, when, when, when Biggie Smalls had the Junior Mafia, Mafia, niggas decided to make the firm, right. and niggas decided to make the uh, commission. And niggas yeah. decided yeah. to, oh shit, we mm -hmm. need a girl in the crew. And when niggas start throwing Fox and Kim, and it was just all like mimicking each other to try to figure out who had the best moves and shit like that. Right. So at the end of the day, um, I was glad to be a part of that. I didn't have no animosity towards none of these guys because I don't personally know you. You know what I'm saying? I mm -hmm. have no reason to not like you. Either like your music or don't. I don't give a fuck about you. Right. Shit like that. But my guy, as he's growing, I feel I deserve to be growing too because uh, he's making me step my pen game up. Every time I'm around this guy, I don't need to be around nobody else. I just, as long as I'm around these these guys, I'm going to stay as sharp as fucking, uh, fucking yeah, samurai sword. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Right. Can you turn out records as fast as he's doing? I can. What you no, mean? No, no. Turn out. Can you, can you turn out? Yeah. yeah. Can you turn out? Can you, can you produce? Can you get a record out at that time as fast as he can? Hell no, because he had the help. And that's the difference. He had the help. That's the difference. Like, yeah, your pen may be as sharp, but if he's producing at a certain rate, and you my, can't keep my, up with that my, rate. My, my, problem, but at the same my time, problem is this, right? Yeah. When I start realizing that my personal shit start trickling over to the business side is when I personally ask the label. When, when I'm doing my album, I think I might have handed in a list of some of the artists that I potentially would want, want to work, work with. with, and they kind of like shot everything down. Everything? Who's yeah. on that list? It might have been like all oh, Kelly and the people that they was working with, the same people that's, that y'all got access to. Right. I know you have access to. If, if they're not directly on your roster, I know you have access to because you guys are up there. Like that. Right. So out of everybody that might have been on the list, I can't remember everybody. Was there a competition going on between you and no, I think the only thing they, only person they wanted me to probably rap with was Nas. And I'm saying... The guy that I know before I even met you, the guy that I probably could even get a song with without you guys are the only guys that you're telling me that you're willing to reach out to help me produce, you know, do this album. I don't know what it is or whatever, whatever the case may be, but I didn't feel I, even though he was blowing up and it's my man, I feel that I'm still trying to create my sound. So you can help me reach out and get to some of these other artists that Y'all already working with and have relationships with, and I didn't get that kind of help. So I kind of felt that maybe somebody might have said something, or maybe it's because 
you know, when you start getting money and you start making these records, people don't want to offend other people and they want to continue to have they relationships. They start picking sides. They pick sides. They definitely pick sides. They they definitely absolutely. Pick sides. They definitely pick sides. And the company going to go with the cash cow. So if you don't know that, just know that. Yeah, they definitely pick sides. And, that, and that's why I was saying try to keep him out of the realm of having somebody pick a side. Because mm. as soon as they got to go and pick a side and say, hmm, am I going to go against, it ain't just Nas, nah, Steve Stout. Am I going to go against this one? And they got five people. And we got nature saying, I ain't doing that. Like, give me my music. Mm. They're going to be scared. And that's in-house. Imagine if yeah. you fucking making records or you trying to uh, have a verbal battle against somebody that's a multi-platinum artist. These motherfuckers are going to step so far away from you. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how nice you think you are. You start going at Hove. You start going at somebody that they they love and they they want to play their records. They gonna go, yeah. ah, nigga. Yeah. I wonder. Yeah, I wonder stop. how. I don't care what you got. Be, yeah. I don't care what you yeah. be yeah. for. I wonder how different Chill it would have been had you turned down the invitation to join the firm. Firm album drop. Mm -hmm. But Nas takes fifty on tour. Why? I think because he had a song that was kind of like I said before, hot, building up in the streets. The radio started playing yeah, in the How to Rob. You know what I'm How to Rob. I didn't have a song necessarily, so I think it was time for me to get in the studio. That's what I thought. You know what I'm saying? I felt a certain kind of way because I wanted to make some money. Right. But I also knew that I had to deliver some music, so I, uh, I figured that you know I was outnumbered. They wasn't gonna really see my vision, they probably didn't, and I don't know, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna turn into a whole different thing because when it's time to get money, even though I didn't have a, a, a legitimate manager, I would've definitely been going for what I thought would've been my share of the pie, you know what I'm saying? Right, but, but 50 was with you the whole time. Yeah, 50 was with me, he was every day in the studio, you know what I'm saying? 50 was Was you there one. when he made the How to, How to Rob record? No, he played it for me. He played it for me in the studio, and when I heard it, I was like, holy shit, this shit is crazy. hell. Because I'm listening to all the names that was on it, you know what I'm saying? And and it was some parts of it that was funny, some parts that people might have took serious, whatever, but I knew that he was just making a record. But mm -hmm. I, it got under people's skin fast. Now, was it true that he had Nas's name? Hell yeah, he had Nas's name in there. He had a couple names in there. Uh, Pun. Pun's name might You're have been. You talking about there. how to rob? Yeah. yeah. Pun, RZA. No, RZA. About, RZA. But, but originally, he took Nas' name out. Yeah. Because it's not on the record. You know what I'm saying? I don't know who said what to who, but it wasn't on the record when <laughs> I heard it. Record, no more. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. I heard the version with, with right. everybody. Yeah. yeah. So that was the first. That was the. It was, was like, hope. So when I heard that record, when I heard that version, I was like, wow. And so, and so when it got to that part, I was like, you know. I, I forgot what the lyrics was, but it was like, wow. What did I hear about the version? I've never heard it with Nas' name in it. I've never nah, heard nah, it. Nah, I got a one. Because I, I can't heard, even remember. He's I, around Nas. I, w was it always intentionally a playful record? Yeah. Because a lot of shit always. got stirred up. Always. Doesn't. Because of, it wasn't thought about to say somebody's name. He's saying names. Right. And he's going from artist to artist to artist. And everybody that he's saying, is, is recognizable, <laughs> and you're like, holy <laughs> shit, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. He said some shit about Missy. He, he, said, said, about yeah. 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 he said, you know, and these people are, they basically run radio. Right. So to have somebody going against them, I guess that was a, like a smart play. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I guess that was enough for Nas to take him on tour because I still didn't have that a solid record yet. Right. I got verses for days. They know what I'm doing. But I don't have a record that probably gonna command the. Uh, I think not the audience. I don't know how much they really right with me. You know what I'm saying? Now, now looking at, at hip hop and where it is now, there's artists like uh, Griselda, who, with all their success, you don't really hear them on the radio at all. Shout out to Griselda. Uh, uh, not not consequence. Um, Man. No, no, no. He's, he's, part of he's elder. Not Conway. I'm forgetting homie name. But there's a there's a ton of artists now that have a lot of success that don't make records 
that you play in a club or play in like on the radio. Yeah, we know that now because we know the the, the love for this shit is fucking out of the water. Right. But when it comes down to making an album under a major label at first, right? You got a lot of people that's kind of like directing you and telling you that you need to make certain records, right? Mm -hmm. And then when they say, yo, you need a radio record, so many things come into mind at that time of what could be a radio record and what could be a chick-friendly record. We're not realizing that the chicks love the same shit we love and, you know, some of the songs that's on the radio ain't necessarily party records. And, right. You know what I'm saying? But if you spend most of the time in the hood, you don't know what your definition of a party record is because you don't really party. Exactly. You yeah. in the hood. Yeah. You know, you don't really fucking party yeah. at all. Like, we party amongst ourselves and shit like that. So right. we love this hood shit. That's why we, we still love our, our hood shit like that. So that's why people still going to love Griselda. People going to still love radio. People that go against the total shit of what the game, you know, expects from you and shit right. like that. So, But do you find, like, this... This is now the perfect environment perfect. for what you're doing? Perfect. Especially if you got people that's been behind you already. If you're just starting, it's kind of hard because you got to kind of connect with the pieces to kind of get the attention of the people. They, they forget about you tomorrow. Right. So unless you kind of like rubbing shoulders with the guys that you might not even listen to right. but because they hot, you know what I'm saying? Right. This, you're playing a different kind of game. Mm. You know what I'm saying? You gotta ask yourself what game you playing. Right. So if you're gonna keep it to, keep it a hundred and do what you've been doing, you know what I'm saying? Some, so the some radio people, record just wasn't your I thing. I look at it like this. One of the greatest rappers I ever heard was Cool G Rap. But due to the fact of Cool G Rap staying in his bag the, that way, do you think it kind of hurt him from Hell now? Oh yeah, hurt him. I mm -hmm. think I think um, yeah, he didn't make sure success to legitimize his rapping. But 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 he's legitimately yeah, one of those guys. On you yeah, he you know what I'm saying? Like you're like you're, like you're not talking about the early eras of hip hop without bringing up Cool G rap. It's disrespectful. He was in that trinity. Cool G. I mean I mean we're a different generation. Yeah. Okay, but when you mention it. Jay Z and Nas and Cool G rap the masses. Well, no, that not that it's them. no because it's Kane, Rakim, and Cool G. Yeah, that that's Them three. that's that's that triple headed monster. Yeah, the Trump. way Biggie, Biggie J and Nas, the way it's Kendrick, Cole, and Drake, like Drake, it's it's yeah. that he's that I, I that think, era. I think it's due to hip hop was so so young, mm -hmm. people didn't understand what was possible. Like there's there's a ton of artists that made radio records. And nobody really thinks about nowadays, or or even consider in the top ten of mm -hmm. artists. Well, hell no, but bro, no, I'm just talking about the recognition of just where G Rap would be if he had one or two or out. Everybody has that record. Like Jay Jay Z was spitting on on reasonable, but when he came with Volume Two, it was more sonically pleasing to the ear. The masses could hear it. It set him up to now do whatever it is that he wanted to do from there. We had it at the okay. If we talking about Cool G, mm, no, but, no, no, but, but nobody brings it. They bring up reasonable doubt. They don't talk. Hard not life is the record. Hard but that's life. that. But that's life life is the record. okay. All right, all right. That's the world tour. What right. we, what we, what we, what we're missing, what we're forgetting is. Oh no, is, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, make, I'm making a stick. I'm thinking volume life. one. Yeah, I'm thinking volume one. What volume we're forgetting two. is the era. Yeah. What we're forgetting is the era. The era that he's talking. The era that Cool G Rap was thriving in. Radio was not the main. College radio was the thing. So we talking about. Definitely. We we talking. Shout out to um. Shout out to who them boys ran ran NYU radio. Why can't I think of them? Oh, Stretching Bobby. Stretching Bobby. Like we talking about that era. So in that era, Cool G Rap comes out with rags to riches. Yeah. Everybody's going nuts. But a radio record back then was EPMD. So what you saying? Yeah. That was a radio. That shit came on her, but radio wasn't then. But his era, Nas put out. It was written. Trackmasters did most of that album. Those dudes was radio. Masters. I, 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 so, I, I, so can you be a star? Right. Can young. you be a star without yeah. a radio record? Yes. Now. Today, yes. 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 And back then, yes. 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 Your era, not so much. That's what I'm saying. The late Somebody '90s, never. early 2000s. You need a radio. You gotta be on the radio. I said from 
once Wu Tang caught it, all the way up to about 08, you needed radio. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. From 92 uh, to 2009. I don't even, I don't even know if 92. Uh, two. Established. Not, yeah. not, not for people to say nature is dope. We're talking right. about establishing right. yeah. to the world. Uh, as, a, as, a, as a star to be what you are In from the 90- industry, not the culture. If we talk about the industry, yes, you need yeah, a radio yeah, record. Yeah, I we talk about, about the culture, because what you needed to be nice. What was the that we all love? They put Lauryn Hill on it. If I rule the, the, the world, I rule the world. world. That's right. a right. compressed world. Right, right. But the world is yours. I it, think but it, it set it off, right? It set right. it off, but, but if to, I rule the world. It, beyond that. It, it took me out to her to a different stratosphere. Lauryn was hot. It was a perfect synergy. It was a radio record. Summertime record. It was a sample. Bang. Game right, over. Set to go. With, with Kooji, with Kooji rap, Kooji rap never commercialized itself, and he they never, and he doesn't rap to the, to the females. All the rappers we talk about majorly may hit record songs about a female, even G Rap Sons, or something political. Then even that his was sons. The only difference would keep Kooji rap with these guys. But even his lyrically, sons. Lyrically, he was. Lyrically, yes, I told but, you. Yeah, he, I, he's I'm right. not taking nothing yeah. away from him. him, him Definitely him. in the you, top. With the lyrics, Kooji rap was dope as hell. He just didn't commercialize. We just about stratosphere and where he could have went. Yeah, he didn't commercialize. Math, math, math is right. It was early. And he would have been talking that street shit a little bit, just a little bit later. Three years off, like, four years off, he's out of here. You know what I'm saying? And so so did you get, you met that type of resistance? Uh, as far as like me trying to make my records against yeah. what they was trying to do? Right. Uh, probably, yeah. You said the, the kind of beats the track masters was giving you wasn't what you... I mean, wanted to you, go to. you gotta remember, I go back home. I got havoc. I got these guys playing the brand new Mob Deep records that they just made, probably in the crib. That was probably, you know, hard. I got everybody rocking to. I'm trying to figure out how can I get everybody involved into my music. Track masters ain't doing. Or that. do I need them to get involved into my music? This is my mm-hmm. battle. How do I get them involved in my music? Or do I just say fuck them and go? Roll. Just roll. Right. And what decision did you make? Did you fight for it, or did you just? I went my own way, but I realized that when I go my own way, they gonna fuck with me anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm. So, uh, there it is. That, that, that which, it is. which comes back around to the question that we asked before we took the break: Do you? How different do you think your trajectory would have been had you turned down the offer to join the firm? How? 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 No, 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 no. Now wait. And that I don't think that that question is 100% valid because I don't remember nature being on the radio records. My 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 thing is not even so much musically, but I'm thinking about the politics that came with him joining the firm, stepping into all these other issues. Had you not done that, and we and now we're riding off of the track with Nori, all the mixtape records well, that, that had him on fire. But, but that was the first well, record. The record, that, the, record with Nori, the record with Nori is a, is a, def- is a reaction to the firm record. It's definitely been noted. But you, you were still in the camp. No, what I'm saying is Nori appeared on the firm album, but he wasn't a firm member. So right. when he appeared mm-hmm. on the firm album is because I'm leaving record was my record. I forget that that, that was your was record. Running. Yes, and so to pay me back, as brothers do, he was making working on the album, and we was trying to do a song together. Mm-hmm. And so when I lay my verse, okay. I guess it was to the magnitude where you say, you know what, this might be bigger than what I'm thinking. Let me fucking put it together like this. Okay. Because mm-hmm. okay. I was never in the studio with Rest of Peace Pun and. The brothers that's on the song with me. You know what I'm saying? Shout TV. out to them. You never because, heard their verse when you laid down your verse? Name? I don't know. Uh, he I'm first. Said, he, nah, he was first. If you listen to, if you, if you actually play that album mm-hmm. in the intro, in the intro, in that, it's just me talking. I didn't really have no dialogue, and it's just mm-hmm. me acting stupid because mm-hmm. I was just laying a verse. I was trying to show my man how dope I could lay a verse, how fast I could write a verse, mm-hmm. and how dope I could lay it. So it took me minutes to write it and, and lay it. You know okay, so back to the question. Overall trajectory. I understand this question is tricky. Not, but, not. But, but like I was saying, that was because I put him on a, on a record that yeah, was on a record. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so. not, 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 I think the question series. is, how different right. would your career have been if you not signed with Trackmaster? 
I don't think that, I don't think it would have been as, I don't think it would have turned out the way that I would have liked it because, uh, for one, they had all access of everything that I was recording. So it's not like I had a song out there floating on the radio where labels could kind of like go into a bidding war and like some of these things that used to happen back in the days, like, hey, we're trying to fight over our artists and we're gonna put up who got the most money and stuff yeah. like that. It was never like that. It was always, they knew what I had because I recorded it with them. Mm -hmm. They offered the situation. It was pretty much, they constructed the whole shit. Mm -hmm. I didn't, it was no outside parties. So if it was up to me to create a demo and throw it to the radio and hope that everybody got it, it th that wouldn't happen because I didn't do that. I came in with them. What my man said, it's a green light, let's go. They good, they, they, they helping me do albums and you watch me go from a gold selling album to uh, 2.5 million working with them, you need to work with them too. And they respect you, so they're giving you beats. So no matter how long it takes, it seems like this is the, the proper thing to do they because do. they right here. Right. Who else is it? I didn't have a kid. You know, everybody was working under their own camp. Uh, Biggie, I mean, Puff had uh, the, the the producers. Yeah, you got yeah, Headman mm -hmm. over there. Everybody got their little click of producers that they working with, and Trackmasters was, was right there hot the because they delivering singles. Yes, yeah, that's singles fucking like crazy. Mm -hmm. Yes, they were. Right. So this wasn't right. just a situation. My man just didn't have the business side. Facts. Had facts. Team. He had everything else intact. Lined the up. loyalty. The idea, but when they came to him, they never explained to him the ramifications of if you sign this paper with me, he might be mad, or you need to go get your own people. They never set him up to say, "Go, yo, go get your own people." Do you do you feel like Nas felt slighted? What you mean about me signing my track man? Yeah, had to be, had to be, had to be, because. Why? At a point, in my eyes, it seemed like he was more hands-on as far as uh, the development of, of... Was it 50? Was it... Me. 50 Cent was already his own person. He's not from Queensbridge. Right. So 50 Cent already still had ties to Corey Rooney. He wasn't directly tied to, you know, he had a, like a slash. You know, dudes used to have deals with this slash. He was trying to try Masters in Corey's. Yeah. Power yeah. the yeah. Dollar. C-R-E Entertainment or something. So he still had other people that kind of like looked out for his best interest because he still had that slash. Yeah. So they figured out, hey, if we can't get it done, somebody on the other side will get it done. I was directly with them, mm -hmm. right? So now nah, it's probably had to feel slighted because like you said, you know what I'm saying? This is my guy from the hood. My vision for him is different. So we used to sit in the crib and smoke weed and kind of like uh, figure out image. I had, that's the one thing that I never realized that you kind of, kind of, that what happens, you know what I'm saying? Right. I mean, you got the dopest raps in the world, but like, who the fuck are, are you? you? You know what I'm saying? How you look, how, how you, you dress, dress, how, how you, you marry yourself. Mm -hmm. So you we used to have kind of conversations of like, how I want to look. Mind you, at this point, these, these guys are shopping in stores that I don't go in. They, these, I don't dress like certain, you know, I don't dress like well, that. Well, how was you dressing? Champion hoodie. I dress in the Coliseum. I'm, I'm a, you know what I'm saying? I'm like sneakers, you know what I'm saying? Right. Jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know you say care, but right. you care. Yeah. But you care more be, because be they cool. niggas watching us like us, to be honest. Nah, I just I stood, I just stood out. I, I just, the fact I just stood out. If you looked yeah. at the firm, right? Guys, you know, handsome guys, waves, pretty guys. I came in bald head, talking the hood shit, talking police and all kind of crazy shit. Shit that, you know, you only they they far removed, not far removed, but they removed. They no, right. no, firm they album. They paper. talking like. Crime bosses. Yeah. Not so, yeah, they're talking with Gambino. They're talking. <laughs> yeah. I ain't talking Gambino. I'm talking. <laughs> you know, you know uh -huh. pre DMX. I'm talking hood nigga shit. Right. Mm. So, it always. It looked good as a whole, but internally, that whole situation was just a little too crazy mm. because I think people just. I think. 
The vision of it changed too too much. Uh, like you start out with one sum, and then you deal with so much stuff internally because, like, I, you know, you lost uh, a, a, a member. So much shit is happening because with each individual, they have their own entourage. So you might say the firm might be a four man, five man crew, but with four man, five man crew, everybody got their own. Everybody, so. Foxy got a whole so family. Like, yeah. And then what well, I been from Queensbridge, we're gonna feel like we 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 kinda entitled to his ear a little bit more than y'all guys. Like I don't know when y'all met him, but yo, I, I know him when he was little, like nigga. What's up? Right. You know what I'm saying? Do you do you all right, I gotta ask this question. What up? What led to the diss record? For me? Yeah. Just feeling that. I just get too many responses from this motherfucker. I think my little cousin or somebody from out of state hit me like, what happened? What's going on? Did you hear this record? I heard first, I thought it was speculation that it might be a record that was going around, right? Mm -hmm. I heard that in the hood, but I still was like, Nah. nah. Exactly. Nobody right. did. Nah, he because there was no nothing way. that brought it on that I would think, I'm like, nah, this is just somebody rule was bullshit. Then the record dropped. Build and destroy. Build and destroy. And even though he said some real personal shit on that record, I was really focused on, on what he was saying about me. You know what I'm saying? And I was like, nah. You portray me to be a car thief or a bag stealing person. And I'm like, I never did that. I, I was never on my thing. You know what I'm saying? Some people could. You said purse snatcher? Purse snatcher, car thief, or some shit. Was that a metaphor for what happened no, with track No, it was just. I don't know where it fucking came from. Purse snatcher could be the money. Yeah. Mm. You took money. Grabbing the bag. Down. Right. No, I, no, no. That's oh, subliminal. Yeah. I, that's nice. Okay. No. I'm talking, about, <laughs> <laughs> I'm talking about fucking stealing people's purses and, yeah. and dumb shit. Like, nah, right. I never, that never been my thing. You know what I'm saying? Right. So, but I don't know where that came from. On that record, you know what I'm saying? Uh, he spoke on Recipes Prodigy and he spoke on Cormega. And I think it was just... He was at a point where he needed to say what he needed to say. I don't know. I don't. I don't condone throwing your peoples under the bus or shit like that. So I never really actually sat down and talked to him. Like, what? What was the reason behind that? You guys never spoke. Never. Never. How, how do you grow up from young? You know what's ciphers. crazy? You know what's crazy? It's been plenty of people that are mutual friends that probably had the opportunity to squash, squash it. it. But for some reason, chose not to get involved. Whatever. Mm -hmm. And they don't see the importance of it. I see it as far as uh, one, as yo, you was my homie at one point, but before any of, it, any of this. See, now, I hate and shit two, like that. And two, for the culture. I, but this is for what I'm saying. I, I hate shit like that because motherfuckers just do that and then one of those people a pass away, and niggas is at the funeral crying the hardest. Yeah, that's what happened. Niggas is rest in peace to the homie, I yo. Should've. I wish, I, I wish yeah, uh, yeah. that if I could have, if I could have went back, if if I'd have just picked up the phone. It wasn't yeah. that serious. Yeah, it wasn't oh, that's that the main serious. one. It was never that that's serious. That's the famous one. I yeah. just realized it wasn't that serious. So then let's talk, let's look. What's it gonna take to get y'all two together? Not, not even y'all two together. No, I'm, him and not. I mean, for, 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 you gotta ask yourself. There's, a, there's two parts to that question you mm. just said. One, would it be for personal reasons, or two, would it be for business reasons? Because it has if, to be personal because, first. Or, it gotta because be personal. For one, you have to wind up. I just never was even in this occupied the same space with him in years. It's not like we've been in a room and we just totally like fucking not acting like we're, nobody's in the room. It's not to that point. I've never really been in areas where he's at. You know what I'm saying? He's done a lot of things since I've actually interacted with him, like, you know, open up restaurants and do all, you know, his success level has been going up. You ever up. been to his restaurant? Yeah, hell yeah. Sweet chick? <laughs> hell yeah, I fuck with sweet chick. You don't fuck with sweet chick? Yeah. Hell yeah, I fuck with sweet chick. Especially the one in Williamsburg? <laughs> no, I fuck with it. The one in Williamsburg, you know what I'm saying? But um, it's crazy because on one side of him, I got 
nines on one side, I got Nori, and mm -hmm. they both experienced more success as the years progressed. Nori doing the podcast shit just like you, right. and seeing you know how big this Shout thing could be. Nori. Shout out to Drink Champs and, and the whole squad. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, shout out to Queen. Maybe it's my pride of just feeling like I never wanted to fucking ask for favors <laughs> because I know a lot of people. A lot of people promise me shit, mm. but I never really. I always wanted to. I always wanted to do it on my own type of shit. I just was like that. You know what I'm saying? And maybe that's the fault. That people would be like, yo, you got all these opportunities you could take, you could, you know, take advantage of. But if I did that, my career would go so many different ways. And I don't want to just be like doing shit just because. For you know, I got on because uh my situation called for it. You know what I'm saying? But I it wasn't really the I don't know if it was the right decision. You know, it's like putting a band-aid when you needed stitches. So mm -hmm. it's like you just you just cover it temporarily. You just fix it a situation. But, but sometimes things weigh on you. It do, and everybody but feels it. It do. And, and 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 I think that as time goes on, that weight becomes it's like an invisible two ton weight just sitting on your back. Let me tell you something. As you get older, you just look at life different, right? And you come to the acceptance and say that maybe certain things just wasn't supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Right? True. You can't judge somebody else's success and say, hey, I, I, of course I deserve it too. Mm -hmm. But if it's not in the cards, it's not in the cards. Your level of success might not be my level of success. You know what I'm saying? For everybody that's out there, let's take a different genre of music. Let's take uh, old music. Let's take, you know, everybody says Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson is the king of pop, right? right. There's nothing higher than Michael Jackson. But for every Michael Jackson, there's a prince. And for every prince, they got a bunch of people riding for prince. And for every prince, there's a fucking Smokey Robinson. Right. And there's a people for everybody, you know what I'm saying? Right. But for everybody, right. as long as you stay active, I guarantee the right people are going to gravitate to you and, you, and you're going to do what you do, you know right. what I'm saying? But if you're comfortable with, my story's never over. That's why our conversation right now is kind of like, because I didn't throw in a towel. That's why, like, we look at verses and shit like that. I look at verses, and, and you know, I'm quite sure you got your own opinion on what's going on. Mm -hmm. But shit like that is when I look at people that's like at the end of their ropes, mm -hmm. like, like you didn't deliver your best shit like that. I still feel like I got the potential to go up because every day I'm connected with people that still grounds in the culture, like you, like y'all guys. I'm invited to shit like this to tell my story. So I'm rejuvenated every time, right. every time. And I'm thankful to have the opportunity to be plugged into the game by a goat. When you plugged in by a goat, certain doors just don't close. It's just up to you to deliver. They will close it on you, don't get it twisted. Yeah. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Man, you don't walk but through I ain't it. here by luck by chance, you know right. what I'm saying? I'm just trying to make sure my dude and I have the, like you always said, it was always been about the team. You know what I'm saying? Having trust in dudes, dudes having faith in you, and, and you know, and you're making it happen, having a plan and shit like that. So every day I'm learning about shit, and sometimes it takes for you to look back to kind of understand what it takes for you to move forward. And so that's all it is. Well, if, if the career, are okay. you happy with where you are now? Hell yeah, let me tell you why. Please. I got my life, I got my health, I have a family, I have a wife, I watch my children. Congratulations. I watch my children grow up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I understand that, that you know, I used to use the the term friends loosely in the beginning mm. because I just thought that that was just the term. But I have a lot of I realized over the years that um every experience is a learning experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I try to use my ears more than you know, talking, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people be like, yo, maybe he's just not vocal enough because maybe I just didn't really care. I love to do this shit. I love the response I could get from the people. I love the fact that I'm able to generate some money for my family. I don't, I don't anticipate being the richest or the best or whatever, whatever, but I'm just glad I could still be relevant to the guys that give a fuck. Wow. So I play, I got a lot of hats, you know but what I'm you, saying? But you touched on, like, 
I always look at it as we all live in blessed lives. You touched on things and you That's did right. things that nobody else has done. Right. You've seen things. Like, we're kind of skipping where you could have gone instead of being like, this is where you was at. This and look what you, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Look what you what accomplished. You, you accomplished yeah. great things, right? And right. then on mm -hmm. the back end of it, about you and Nas, me and Rock Wilder had a similar thing. Uh, Rock Wilder made me an A-list manager when nobody knew me. I was a young boy, right? After things went down, things kind of went awry. And I wasn't really feeling how shit ended. Niggas right. left me no money, no opportunity, and all of that. Right. It took time. Me and Rock Wilder never talked about it until he came on the show. Wow. And okay. he called me and said, I needed to talk about some of those things. Mm -hmm. Like, like it's so many things I feel. Me, me and Buster was close. That's his name. I never even mentioned his name. But you know what I'm but on a situation like this, on a, talk, on a situation talk. like this that he's asking about, with like, uh, you know, reconciliation with like mm -hmm. Nas or some shit like that, who would be the mediator there? I didn't, I didn't have no mediator. I, 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 I don't. Right. I don't think you, you just run need up on somebody. I didn't run up. No. I don't think you need a mediator. I called him. Somebody in that stature, you can't just run up on. It's too many. Bro, it's too much. Let me tell you something. If, if y'all wanted to really get in contact with each other. No, nah, it got to be a two-way conversation, though. Because why do people feel like just because you make it that you're under the assumption that I, I really want something from you, especially no. if I know you? Nobody's I, saying I'm, that. I'm not, no, 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 saying no. That. But people feel like that. Yep, some people nah. do. But you, in a situation where y'all came from nothing yeah. and rose together, uh, there's, there's just certain certain bonds that you just don't. You don't just let it slip and be like, okay, you know. And, and it's was, not it's not about that. how he, at the end of the day, it can't be about, if you step into him to reconcile for, for whatever reason, or even to just get it off your chest, be at yeah. peace with your soul. So when y'all are both dead and going, nobody's sitting there going, damn, I could have squashed it. It wasn't that serious. No, but you gotta, the, you gotta look at it like my, in my eyes. It's not beef. I never, yeah, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity to mm -hmm. be able to do what I do. Once you put me, introduce me, once you open up the door, I don't expect for you to uh, escort me to the meeting. I, I, you open up the door for me, right? Me? Now, but, but away from the business, uh, some of the people that we were mutually interacting with are no longer there. It's not even just me. No, I'm not saying, what I'm saying is, if you don't say nothing else to him, but what you just said just now, yeah. yo, I'm grateful you opened up the door. Mm -hmm. Thank yeah. you so much for uh, where my life is right now. I love, I got my family, I got my health, and you gave me an opportunity to do X, Y, Z, A, B, M, C. I need you to know I'm not mad at you. I've never been mad at you. It's not beef. I just need you to know that from me. But you know what's crazy? I'm from the hood. I got a lot of pride, right? I, I, sweep, pride a lot, I, I sweep a lot of shit under the, under the rug. Only for the simple fact in this matter, we're talking about 20 years, mm -hmm. right? It doesn't matter, bro. Yeah, no, look, 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 matter. look, 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 <laughs> look, 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 listen, man. listen to what I'm saying, though. Only because it's, it's, it's his stature that you would say that. Think about- No, how, it's not how, his stature. No, 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 no. Think about a shorty you dated 20 years ago. I'm thinking about myself. Think about a shorty you dated 20 years ago. I still got ago. things that I feel like I need to say to my pops. Yeah, you think what I'm saying? But do you think like I'm I'm a grown man. I got kids, kids. But there's still things that I feel like inside I need to say to him. You think mm -hmm. what I'm saying? That's and I don't got nothing to do with his position, what he or did. Or his things. stature. That's nothing. Like, it's it's just uh. certain things like you don't when you have bonds with people and those bonds break. If you, don't you, if you never had the conversation or never mutually mm -hmm. decided, like, yo, all right, you just go your way, I go mine. If you never had that conversation, there's always a million question marks, whether you acknowledge it or not. Or yeah, like, I, get I don't it, know. I get, it, I get it, I get it, but do you even consume yourself with that? No, you don't. It's just like certain things that just don't get said. Sometimes you might have a shorty and you might never actually say, do you want to be my girl? You just go along with it every day, every day until it becomes reality. The same way in reverse, it will become reality. If I'm with you and we kind of fall out, I don't have to necessarily say, I quit you. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> right. We're just not together no right. more. What are you talking about? Yeah, it's the same shit with your man, but it's not a disrespect thing. 
Because at any given moment, if it's real, it can spark right back up. But if it never was real, you don't want to feel like I'm reaching for you. Nate, you know Fuck out of here. You no, know I, you That's know your pride. You don't say you it like that, my nigga. Pride. You ain't for Christmas. You ain't for Christmas. Hold on, hold on, hold on. For In my opinion, for <laughs> see what you just did right there? Repping your shirt right there, repping yeah. your Queensbridge, yeah. for y'all to come out from there. See, part of Queensbridge, people don't, from Queens probably don't even consider that as Queens. Like, no, we I, do. <laughs> listen, how he said it, it's different a little bit. No, we, we divided, but we still. Listen to what he said earlier. Right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, from South Jamaica. Just like Far Rockaway, people kind of say, that's their own area. Yeah, Y'all Fall Rock is their own area. That's, I, I, I do consider Queensbridge your own area, especially versus, coming from Southside. Yes. Just coming because I'm, I'm a ball player too and play ball inside that cage over there. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And although I was from Southside, the bridge was different. We looked at the bridge as young kids like, damn, this shit is right next to Manhattan. Manhattan. That's how we looked at the bridge, like this shit right here. Even though it's still Bobby Queens. It's still Queens, but we was like, the bridge is right, right. You know here. What? You know what? You know what? We all separated in Queens until a nigga from Staten Island show up. <laughs> and now all of a sudden, we all from Queens. Until a nigga from the Bronx show up. Yeah. And now all of a sudden, we all from, now it's us and them. Exactly. But what Bro, I'm saying, what, but the, 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 the base. Tell me, tell me, tell me, tell me. You're trying to tell me right now, nobody in this room has somebody that you probably haven't spoken to in a long time and over some bullshit, over some bullshit, whether it be family, friends, or otherwise, that you probably used to hang with. I had a song on my first album called We Ain't Friends, right? Now, when I put the song out, initially, of course, I was going through my feelings and it was maybe leaning towards some other shit. But, but the generalization of the song is we all have somebody that at one point we fall out with. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, do you feel the burning desire to fix every situation that you fall out with? The if ones that are important. No, 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 no. Yes. The you ask the question. Yeah. You ask the question. No, let's let's go around. You ask the question. Let's go around. 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 let Yo, 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 you heard such and such passed away? And I'm like, what? Oh, nah, 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 it was bullshit. But that one second, it's like, damn, I ain't get to talk to him. You feel what I'm saying? So that happens. No, I know that that happens, but do you actually, outside of general family, like you just said your pops, that might be the first on the list that, you know what I'm saying, I lost my pops. I feel that way, the same way you just said, and I didn't get a chance to actually have a conversation that, as an adult, that I really wanted to happen. And because of pride on my side, pride on his side, or whatever the case may be, it didn't get to happen, and I regret it. But... See, when don't, you get I don't stuck want you to. I don't 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 want you to. No, listen to what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want you to. Right. I don't want you to. Yeah. Listen, I don't want you to think yeah. that it's this. Not really my, <laughs> my situation, my situation, and what we're talking about, like mm -hmm. with me and the homie. I don't want you to ever think that that never crossed my mind, and that's not what I wanted, and I didn't attempt God. to cross that bridge. Respect. Okay. Respect. I didn't just sit there and just fucking let the bridge go down. I tried to cross the bridge on several attempts. And I still may attempt to cross the bridge. Okay, even as okay. A, even as a piece and a salute. Even if we don't conduct business as a man, you know what I'm saying? It yeah. is what it is. And I congratulate you on the success that you had. Right. You didn't need me for that shit. Right. You know what I'm saying? On camera, off camera, you know what I'm saying? I would love for, you know what I'm saying? But don't, 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 it's not, maybe I, maybe we, maybe not it's just, just two bro, stubborn people. Bro, just. You said what? You just said. leave it there. You said there you it. You said you it. Good man. Leave it there. Bang down. Bang down. You said it. Wow. 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 I mean, you got to understand. The What's history y'all made, there was no blueprint to this. Y'all came out of fucking Queensbridge. And y'all were children. And y'all was fucking famous in your this, early 20s. This, this, is why, this is why it's important to see y'all connect. Not for anything you need anything. The blueprint of what y'all fucking laid down. 
I want to keep seeing that shit progress even more. And I'm, I'm a, that's it. I'm gonna piggyback on his shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna be honest with you. If y'all don't never make another song again tomorrow on some grown man shit, you don't never make another. You never in the studio. Never yeah. no music, no nothing, no beats, no nothing. You don't want to let it go to the grave without squashing it, without saying what needs to be said. You don't want it to the point where it's too late. But I want to go to the hook. Nate, can I ask you a question? I just got a question. I just got a question. That's both sides. Hold on. Real quick. I got one more second. Nas, I was about to say that. Nas, Nas has to want to receive that too. We don't know about the hit. Agree. I'm going to say this to the camera. I don't know y'all business. I'm not into it. But Nas is a smart dude, and we know what I always tell people. Please don't penalize young niggas for not knowing the business and their front two lobe not being developed. Develop. It's 20 years now, and Nas knows definitely. If he didn't have people like Steve Stout in his corner to help him make the decisions, or that white kid that invests his money for him, whoever that kid is, he wouldn't be where he's at, too. Now, I just feel like he didn't get his, let me know my boy, I just feel like he didn't get his chance to set his stuff up right in order to see what When you say he didn't get his chance, bro, he's still here. No, I'm talking about exactly. back then. 98 Nate just dropped. Just dropped, baby. Pass, man. 98 he's Nate. He's still here. Right now. Back. All right, now. I, I think we're, we're in, a, in a space with hip hop where it's grown. It's grown. We mm -hmm. can have mature rap conversation. Everybody don't right. have to be On 20 wax. years old, 19 years old. Yeah. Like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thank like God. if you if you a master of the craft, I don't care how old you are. It's here. Yeah. Not right. no no offense. I don't know how old Jay Electronic is. But I still listen to the last album and I liked it. Music is music, man. Good music you is timeless, man. Jay, two Chains is my two chains is one of my bro. Yes, yeah, stop. Not to put two chains out there, but but we know he he it's made older. it. He yeah, made it older, at, at a very mature. We age. supposed to grow up. Facts. You're not supposed to die at 25. Your life doesn't but end at 30. We supposed sonically, to grow up. You still gotta make sonically pleasing music even if you're grown up. I'm though. sonically pleased by the shit up, that I'm getting. Sometimes the grow up dudes be making some boring. We're not talking about that. them. Nah, we're, we're, not not talking talking about about them. we're not talking about them. We're not talking about, about them. them. We're not I'm talking about them. I'm talking about them. Too. I'm, no, I'm talking about people who compete in the field because even. No, no, no. Because they even when they were young. No, no, no. Stop. Even when they were young, even when they were young, they still needed to compete. Everybody got to compete, and you right. don't get a pass on competition at no age. Is that a New York thing? No, no, no. no. They're not competing now. That's a standard thing. What did he say to me when we first sat down? The first thing he said to me was, "You got to give the young dudes a chance." I said, "If they suck, they suck. You got to be good. You got to be good at way... any era, at any age." How old is Kendrick Lamar? When Section 80 dropped, that nigga was killing everything moving, and he was in his twenties. Let's stop talking. To, let let's stop talking about age as if you, you can't be good. I'm talking about phenomenon. I'm talking about people who are good. I'm talking about people who are good. You know, God, 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 God bless the dead, but is Biz Marquee a better rapper than these kids that's rapping now? This is lyricism. What these dudes are put on something. Put three six mafia. Big Daddy. Why? Why we? Why? Why did? Why did you just yell three six mafia? Not all of them. I didn't say you had to be that lyrical. I said you had to be good. Good in what? It has to be quality. Good in what? And rapping. Go one at a time. There you go. Right. And where your standards are, where your standards are, and where mine are, can be in two different places, and I can respect. Wherever your standards are. My standards, Cormega, Nature, Nas, AZ. That's where my standards are. And they don't drop to suit the times. They maintain in spite of the times. That's what a standard is. So no, my shit doesn't drop because somebody just came out and I should keep it. No, nigga, you have to come up here. I'm not going down there. I've right. been there already. You right. need to come up here. The art's supposed to fucking elevate, not drop and go in reverse. Are you don't move, walk. You come up. Are you stuck in a time capsule? Fuck time capsule, niggas. is good today. Bobby and Corday is good today. Day. Fucking Tyler the Creator is good today. today. Like right Kanye now. Kanye is good today. Niggas is relevant and dope now. I've never had to take a back seat on my standards. There's always been somebody dope for me to fucking listen to. I'm not stuck on listening to shit from the 90s. There's niggas out right now that I'm having a ball with. I'm good. It's not because my fault, but y'all niggas not listening. The guys you named, they weren't 
You, you didn't name none of the dudes in the late 80s. Or the mid man, in the late man, 80s, man, I was kind of, It's more shit to listen to now. You, I'm, I'm quite sure we all got something in the playlist that somebody will probably look at it and be like, what the what fuck are you doing? That? You like that? Yeah, but, you know, it's so, it's so much shit right now, man. It doesn't even matter. But if you, <laughs> it, it don't even matter. Oh, but if, you, if, you, if you're content with delivering solid music and with your eyes to be solid, just continue to do that. You don't mm. have to sway with the times. There's so much shit for everybody. Exactly. Right? My right? standards never drop. You know what I'm saying? But but at the end of the day, these battles will always go on because there might be something that you might find to be you you champion that I might I might just be like, nah, I don't like it. That's Math let result. me hear something. I go nuts. My standards don't have to drop. That's all I'm saying. Cormega, Cormega just did a pop-up shop the other day for a 20-year anniversary album. I watched this man bring out women, fathers, parents, and their children all know his verses. Three fucking separate generations of motherfuckers who are all dope. You drop 98 and 8, I've been bumping it. Like, that shit is... I'm not suffering. And then I got Tyler the Creator right here. I'm not, so I'm not, I'm my, I got enough, more than enough to listen to fucking Coast Contra just burnt down the fucking studio. Facts. The niggas was on Jimmy Kimmel. And I, and I wanted to say to Coast Contra, I was Shout out saying, to Coast Contra. I was not saying that you don't know what you wrote. I was saying that Math saw something else within your bars. Right. That, that connected your bars that you didn't even see the connection to and you thought it was. The culture is alive and yeah. well. That's we not good he knew, bro. money. He knew. It's just some shit like you don't you just don't expect people to understand. understand. Other for right. other people to catch. Yeah. Well, maybe because I'm not a lyricist, I didn't get that. That's why we got mad. Yeah. He was excited that another lyricist picked up on this Quickly, shit. Quickly too. Right. That's that. I Matt, thought he said I didn't hear that, but maybe I'm sure. Nigga, oh Henny Savan out here, Shaw Summers out here, Petty out well, here. Well, Nate, who, who's in Good. your playlist? A lot of old stuff, man. <laughs> I don't have a playlist. Time I, don't, I don't really have a play. I don't really have a playlist. Like, ah, um, damn. I listen to a uh, little baby the same way I can oh, listen right. to Chinks drum. Oh yeah. Same Chinks way I, can listen to, I, I listen to everybody. You know okay, what I'm saying? Um, it all depends on what mood I'm in. Right. Sometimes I really just. Sometimes I listen to music more in the car than in the crib. Me too. Mm. Yeah. Right. And so when I'm in the car, if I'm by myself, of course I'm not. I'm gonna be playing the same shit if I got my daughters with me. You know what I'm saying? I got daughters. But um I like hard shit. I stay with my hood shit, man. I stay with my Nas, I stay with Biggie, I stay with old shit. But right. then I try to give an open mind to some new shit. But you say uh, you fuck with little baby. Yeah, I fuck with yeah. little baby. I, can't I don't get really much know, man. Mm. You do you still know. have the records that you had on the wall? No. <laughs> Somebody <laughs> stole my shit. <laughs> <laughs> No, I think maybe I went. In, I had to put them in storage. I think I had too much shit, and I had to uh, get in storage, and I wound up moving, and I lost a bunch yeah, of shit. shit. Yeah. yeah we, we all lost yeah. that shit. We were like, storage. fuck, yo. You ever see an old picture? Yeah. Are you wearing something? You're like, where the fuck where did that go? <laughs> I used to love that jacket. Where but the it's the same it? type of shit that um, when you've been making music for a long time, it's kind of easy to kind of like get back into that same kind of sound. It's easy for me. You know, sometimes I challenge myself to try to make music that's kind of like reflects what's going on now. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, but for the most part, I always go back to what makes me comfortable. But it's just like the same shit like Jordans and like they keep putting out the same shit. The shit that you, the nostalgia, the shit that you didn't remember when you had when you was a kid. It's the same type of shit when certain kind of music hits you too. Yeah. And then I don't realize that it's a void for it until I put out new music. And then be like, damn, there's nothing out there that kind of like sounds like this. Right. Because for my camp, Nas don't put out music as much as everybody. Rest in peace, we don't have Prodigy no more, so we don't get Mob Deep music no more. Uh, Cormega's putting out some uh, new music, yeah. but yep. we're waiting for that. Well, but you, can't say, you can't really say that about Nas. I think he dropped three albums. No, the Reason King's Disease, it? he dropped yeah. it, King's but I'm Disease saying, one, but, and then Magic. And then Magic, But yeah, with yeah. him, it's any given moment. You never really know. Right. I he's think, not on a schedule. I think he's one of them just came, like, overnight. Magic was yeah. just Yeah, like, Magic was just out of like, nowhere. He's, he's, he's not on a regular I, I, I artist schedule anymore. Yeah. That's true. What's up? How do y'all feel about Davies and Queensbridge? We just love Davies. Davies is part of the, uh, uh, shout out my dude, Piff Jones. He, they fuck with each other, you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, he showed love to the to the young guys coming up. Uh, I think it's kind of dope. I still don't think, I don't know if he has a one solidified song that kind of like hits it out the park, but he delivers every time. He got bars for days. Wow. Um, yeah. He's constantly working. I think he's smart that he surrounded himself with a bunch of artists that's, you know, it's going to keep him working and shit like that. Yeah. So I expect definitely. to see him for a long time. No. No. What was your thoughts when Kanye came to Queensbridge and did that? I wasn't there. <laughs> they did the shit in the park. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, that's interesting. It was interesting. It was a show, too. Kim Kardashian, too, was in the hood. So that's one of the, I guess that's a hood moment that we all champion. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? For years, anytime somebody mentions our name or comes to the hood, we, you know what I mean? It's not in a bad way. It's not like you coming to a funeral or something negative. You come into the hood. How about that? Who, who's in the Queensbridge Hall of Fame? Mm. Oof. Woo. The Hall of Fame? The typical, the usual suspects, Nas, Tragedy Gaddafi. Tragedy Gaddafi, right. Tragedy Gaddafi yeah. is definitely. Tragedy don't get enough credit. Yeah. Oh my God. Yo, shout out to Trap. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. Uh, I'm into line, man. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. uh, word. Word. For, for not president. only. Arrest the president. For not having, Arrest a, the motherfucking not having a dope story himself. Having the vision to create a lot of that shit, to bring that whole 25 of life shit, the whole component over here, like, yeah. yo, that shit is like crazy. Amazing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Woo, don't start it. Don't start That's it. That's icon shit. Yeah. You know, hood icon shit. Right. But, uh, Molly Maul. Man. Got to. To me, MC Shed. It's so many. Everybody in, it's in my prodigy eyes. in there. Hell yeah. If you want to put him in Queensbridge Hall of Fame, if you, you know, Long Island claim him too, but he, he did his dirt. You know, he did his, his numbers for Queensbridge. Right, fast. And at one point, his vocabulary and his delivery was just was, was second to none. Yeah. He's and I used to be block. like, I ain't even gonna front. I used to scratch my head because I used to be like, sometimes Prodigy would put words together that didn't even rhyme. Yeah, <laughs> that's the thing. And that's the like, thing for real. Yo, that's like, what's that about him. Bro. I used to say that. I, I'd be like, like yo, what are you talking about? Yo, this, in my mind, in my mind, I'd be like, yo, this is fire, but he ain't rhyme for that's like eight bars. Rhyme, bro. <laughs> <laughs> He's rhyme for like eight bars. Son. But he was the truth for this shit. Facts. He was like uh, exposed to a lot of shit early. You know what I'm saying? He kind of like he was different. Like, Hell yeah. He had a bar and when you saw, and when you philosophy. heard him, you thought he was the biggest guy in the world when you first heard him, right? Right, right. <laughs> dope dude, man. Thought it was math site. Dope. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. like I said, I had so many guys around me that kind of kept this thing of ours alive from my perspective. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to everybody else, everybody else that was doing it, but so many unique characters around me that I would be like, oh, this shit is crazy. You know what I'm saying? Uh, my dude Twin, infamous mom. You even know hear Twin's voice? Twin's got that gr grimy voice. There's so yeah. many guys that you be like, you gotta love him. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Oh, can't leave out Shantae. Shantae. Shout out to Shantae. 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 Can't leave out Shantae. Yeah, all that shit, man. Huh? Yeah, you said it right. Yeah, can't, can't leave out Shantae. Rest in peace. Uh, her mom just passed away the other day. Rest in peace. Rest in peace. Or, nah, I got this thing, man. <laughs> What are the untold stories uh -oh. of the in your in your years uh, 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 in the industry outside of the industry? What uh, are there any untold stories that like yo nobody never brought this up? Maybe or just one just... of your personal favorite experiences? Oh. Uh... But I mean, shit, it's so many stories, but like Like did you did you bust somebody ass and ball that was famous or they, you know what I mean? Like word, word. smack did, somebody in the mouth. Did you see some crazy shit? No, I remember uh, there was a lot of shit. I remember uh one night, right? Uh Alan Iverson just made it to the league and we was in Philadelphia, right? And we was in a party for Nas and fucking party was packed. We was in there like stars, man, bottles and everything, right? And we were sitting down. I remember uh, the DJ playing 
Nas had a record called Street Dreams. Right. Yes. But Tupac had a record, a record on the same beat. Same beat. Mm -hmm. So fucking the DJ played the fucking Tupac record. We thought it was a Nas record because we yeah. came up with the beat. All eyes on me. We said we was in the club, everybody's looking at us. That record came on, and at the time, Pac took some shots at Nas. Yeah. My man Killer B gets up in the club party, the big club, goes right to the DJ booth. And you know the turn the technique turntables. If you hit that button like that, the whole record go, ooh. Yeah. The nigga just walked to the fucking DJ ship, boop, stop the record. And walk back to us. And for a minute, the club was fucking silent. The DJ was scared to play the fucking record again. He, was to get he, to get he walked up. all the way back to us in the fucking in club. In silence. Like this. The whole club full of people. <laughs> <laughs> were you, were you there? Was you there the night that they bumped heads? Who? Oh. Um, Nas, Nas and, and Tupac. No, I wasn't there. But that whole night was crazy because police had came to the club. Some crazy shit had happened. I remember um, got, uh, niggas being outside on their knees, like this outside in front of the, on the floor, out in the parking lot. And I remember once they realized Alan Iverson was with us, they let him fucking get up and go. But everybody else was fucking. Wow. Nas too? Nas down there too. Wow. Alan Iverson was like. <laughs> Space Ghost logo right I there. Word of mouth. In your time in the industry, did you ever see anything shifty or anything weird? Like, you know how they like to talk about our uh, oh, there's devil worshiping and this, that, and the third, and da da da. Nah, I never seen no devil worshiping. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I never seen no weird shit like that. Uh, I, I, not to say that none of that shit never happened, but I wasn't really focused on that. Sometimes you only see what you see. Yeah, right. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I, when I used to come around, I used to come around and uh, try to record and get my music done. But like I said, I didn't really party. I didn't own pa club clothes. I didn't, club you know what I'm club, saying? I didn't know none of that shit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Right. I didn't know none of that. So uh, I did what I needed to do. <laughs> Shake hands. I'm a daytime guy, you know what I'm saying? At nighttime, they did what they did, but right. I'll be in the hood. Mm -hmm. So I didn't really see no, no, no weird shit. No weird shit. Or I heard some shit, like, you probably was like, oh. Like what? I don't know, like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> just weird shit. I'm not talking, when you say weird shit, I'm just talking about, like, <laughs> industry, corporate shit, and, and, and knowing that there's a, you know, the, uh, the, Probably some of the sexual preferences of some higher execs or yeah. stories that you might have heard, and I don't know, but mm. nothing that I could di directly put my finger on oh, and say, "Yo, right. he did this or he did that." Right. right. So you ain't I knew there was weirdos in the game. Right. But there's weirdos everywhere. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. But you know, you meet these guys and in different settings. I'm not meeting them in the hood. I'm meeting them under controlled settings. Like I can't. Bring a weapon in here. If I argue with you too too loud, security will escort me out the building. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, you know right. I can't really you know some people just sit behind desks. I come from an era where people sitting behind desks and acting like they the shit all day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Right. So well, there was one other thing I wanted to ask in your experience with all this stuff. What advice would you give the young boys that's watching, the, the 18s, the 20, 24s that aspire to be rappers? What would you warn them of, or what would you tell them, yo, make sure? I would tell them some of the same things that we've talked about on the show, as far as uh, the ways that you would conduct business, please. Like, if you decide to take it serious, to conduct business in the right way and trying to organize a team that has their best interests at heart, um to to realize that time's not waiting for nobody. So if it's something that you really want to do to try to get to get it done because you know, if you if you keep putting it off, chances are you probably won't get it done. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. don't be afraid to be original, you know what I'm saying? Uh it's nothing wrong with having your own shit going on and and being you, you know what I'm saying? 
people will appreciate you better the, being original. It's okay. Right. Mm. Right. 98 Nate is 98 out. What's coming yeah. next? 98 Nate's out right now. Next thing is uh, Legendary Status. We're going to do a bunch of volumes that going to come out. It's going to be uh, uh, me linking up with different producers and different guys in the game. We're trying to release music more of a consistent basis. Mm -hmm. Hopefully we release music on a A, B side every month, every other month with one of some of your favorite legendary producers and artists in the game. You know right. what I'm saying? Look out for some records that I got right now. I'm going to the studio in the next couple of days, about to shoot some more videos. I'm just trying to do me, man. Stay on it, man. Good Stay on it. Good business. Stay on it. Shout out to Queensbridge. Shout out, shout out, Queensbridge. Shout out, Queen Queen Bridge. Bridge. Shout out QB, like shout out Rough Play. Right. Shout out DCF. But this woman sponsors me with PRPS, and I appreciate you. I don't got oh, nothing. I need a sponsor. Lynn, well, I don't got nothing. And I appreciate What's her name? Lynn, Lynn Murdoch. Lynn Murdoch. Lynn Murdoch. I wear a large. Extra large. Extra large. Extra large, 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 large Lynn. Come on, You're man. <laughs> we got to look good you out here. You know what I'm saying? I'm looking over at this every... Every episode, <laughs> and I'm wondering, is this SO's clothes? I, I don't know. He keep, I keep seeing I the same thing out. written on his shirt. All right, cool. I shout him out. All right, cool. All right, cool. Yo, I appreciate y'all having me here, though, man. This is real shit right here. The conversation can go on and on because there's so many different things we can talk about. Old school, new school, shit that's going on, opinions on shit. Yo, I used to have this shit on... Uh, on Clubhouse, right? When mm -hmm. the pandemic hit, we had we was on Clubhouse heavy, right? right. We had this, we had uh, you was a gang bang on huh? Clubhouse. Gang <laughs> no, it wasn't a gang bang. We had some serious <laughs> shit. We had some shit called the Breakfast Battles. Every morning, we used to have uh, uh, debates about you know what was better. You know, we started off pancakes versus waffles, coffee versus tea. We went in, <laughs> we went into TV shows, Fresh Prince versus Martin. We went into everything. Wait, 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 hold on. But let's, but what hold, I was you saying, you did that. I did that. I did that. Fresh Prince versus Martin. Versus Martin. People would call in and put their votes in, and we, we did it for an hour. Every every morning from 9 to 10 a.m., people would me. call in from Not different parts of the, of the world, and we Martin. did this, right? We did everything. Mm -hmm. Different comparisons that you could name that you would, you know, whatever, whatever. But we also had this segment on, this sh on the show called Behind Bars. And behind bars, people was assuming that it was going to be a jail conversation, but we was talking, breaking down the music. And 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 hidden and the hidden drop. messages that's and that's hidden drop. messages behind the music. That's that's, that's the, the show. Drop. That, yeah, we like just that. started yeah. a show called The Drop where we do the same thing. Oh yeah, thing. I had the same shit a few about a year ago called Behind Bars, and that fire. was that's what it was. That's fine. Yo, shout out to the the creative minds in the room. You know what I'm saying? Fresh Prince of Martin. Martin. Everybody Martin. Martin. No, Fresh Prince. They both. They both. That was Fresh tough. Prince. Mm -hmm. Cause, 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 cause he be he slapping Martin. niggas. Cause he be slapping niggas, right? <laughs> <laughs> it <was> crazy. Everything. <laughs> so, we did everything. Big Xbox right. versus PlayStation. We did Fresh every Prince every, every two things that you could probably think about. You know That's what I'm saying? We brought. One. We try to bring excitement to the room every morning, and and we just had different debates about different shit that you know. What I like that idea. Word, word, Let's bro. work on something. Let's talk. Yeah. Let's talk. I got right. people that, that love you, man. Anything that you want to do, man. I got a couple of investors that want to, you know, they willing to sit down and come to the table too. However we want to do it. Zip. That's off camera though. Let's get it. He Let's get it. That talk right there. I'm talking. The best talk he has wow. is how to mark up a contract. That's I all. like that. Yo. Yo. What's her name again? PRP. Lynn Murdoch. Lynn Murdoch. Shout out to PRP. She's been looking out for us for a long time. Can I get mine? She will take care of y'all, but I can get <laughs> y'all. medium. She'll get y'all larges and all that. She's in the back. Nah, I'm cool with this. It's That's official. Right. Look know. like a vacation. Show them bigger. Hey, why not? Salute to everybody. See y'all next time. Much love. Members of DCM, it's my man Nature right here. Legendary Let's stats. get it, let's get it. Larger now, man, the boy, the billion balls, Mr. Fire on the lane. See you next time. Bang, bang. Heineken, and I just gotta say one thing. God was born in Brooklyn. <laughs> ah, there you go. There you go. Now nah, we, we, we closing it on that. All right. See y'all next episode. <laughs> 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 This is hot for trap
trapper turned smack rapper Only smack rapper that you know is smack rappers Got bars, I can hang with the backpackers Trap star, I don't hang with the backpackers I'm in the hood with the work you heard Making fiends leave earth you heard Got your baby mama thirst you heard Feel the flow, nigga, throw it in reverse This the way you need to surf you heard